ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to another episode of The Keel Show here live on 12 Ounce Sports. If you are watching us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Zingo TV, Channel 761, sign up for free using code 12 Ounce. Sign up for free today and watch 12 Ounce Sports live here using hashtag TKS at The Keel Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hashtag The Keel Show to get involved with the show today or any day. We are always willing to receive any questions you have and mention them during the show. Today's show is on 12 Ounce Sports is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. Sports are up in the air, even though COVID is everywhere. You, thought, you thought of that one by yourself, didn't you? Sports, what's that? You thought of that one by yourself, didn't you? Oh, I did. It took you at least five minutes, probably. <laughs> at least. <laughs> Using promo code 12 Ounce Sports, join for free today and win. Also on the show, we have to make sure to mention that we have our own merchandise. Oh, to our own merchandise. You're talking about? Are you talking about this stuff, Alex? Are you talking about that stuff there? That stuff right there. And um, for our audio listeners, we're showing up our graphic for our merchandise. We should probably tell them that because we say, always. "Look at it! Look at it, folks!" It's Teespring.com/store/slash/TheCuelShow with dashes in between the and cool and show. So they should they you know so they know to not obviously look up that stuff because that that would be bad. What just beeped? Um, why is my laptop beeping? Absolutely. On today's program, the NWHL has re- announced their return to play protocol and the PWHPA earns another big sponsor that we will mention later on in the show. We will go over the college hockey scoreboard with Tyler. Hello. Talk a little bit about the COVID uh, pandemic and how that's relating to current hockey news. What arenas that we would like to see replaced? Because in the, the Sky Dome going to go away. <laughs> Yes, Tyler. I'll, I'll, I'll cry more later. You can cry more later. I'll cry more but later. But first, we would be sorely remiss if we did not bring in our first guest and probably the most prominent partner of the show, none other than the brains and brawn behind Second String Leather Company, crafted from the crease, none other than Joe Messina and Zach Smith on the show, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! I'm just hearing a bunch of beeping on my laptop, and I apologize to literally everyone <laughs> because I've realized that because I the, doing all the editing and stuff like that makes me weird. Joe and Zach, hello. How are you guys? Doing great, you? Oh, we are we are doing uh, peachy, peachy keen here at TKS. I have to remind myself to make sure I'm on the window when I click things. Oh, man. So we had – so this is weird because obviously I'm still getting used to the whole doing video chat things on this. Of course, Joe, you came on – Holy cripes. June? July? When, when was the last? When, when did we? It was r- really early on. We weren't even doing live video yet. By the way, Alex, nope. it's been five months since we started doing this live. That is true. It has been five months. It's been too darn long. So when we talked with Joe Messina last, Zach, we obviously wouldn't have you on. We had Joe on because I don't know. I mean, I guess Joe was bored. He said, hey, come on. Let me get on your show because apparently he had $30 in his pocket to get me. No, he didn't. He back in. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have anyone pay us to get on the show because, well, why would they? But Joe told us the story of the Second String Leather Company because he told me about it, gosh, probably in December of this company that he was starting up, and he said you were a big part of it. We heard Joe's side of the story on how this whole thing came to fruition. Now let's hear the truth, Zach. How did you get involved with Second String Leather Company? Oh, well, well, I guess I actually had grown up playing uh, hockey You know, just a few dead end jobs here and there, and ended up uh, moving to Texas, and then getting married and coming back to Michigan, and um, you know, just I knew hockey was my calling, no, and then a few dead end jobs. It was coaching or what have you, and uh, just I had to think of something that would get me into the game and keep me in the game, and uh, uh, so. We were thinking of things, and, you know, I came up with an idea and shot it to Joe, I don't know, like four years ago, yeah. and something like that, and he was like, yeah, that's not bad, and then... Cufflinks. It was cufflinks. Yeah. <laughs> cufflinks. <laughs> yeah. Hockey pucks put into cufflinks. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so, not a bad idea. so that was early stages, and, you know, year passed, year and a half or so, and and then all of a sudden we saw something on Instagram and we're just like, what if we did that with goalie equipment? Like, 
all this unused goal equipment that people are just sitting around in their basements or um, something that they played with back in high school that now they're 40 years old and it's just sitting there. And we're like, you know, you can make some really cool products out of that that hockey fans would really enjoy and um, resonate with. And uh, so I shot him that idea. And he's like, I think you got something there. And uh, it's, it's just something that we kind of just kept in the back of our minds. Like, yeah, let's let's maybe tap into that someday. And then, guy, I don't know, what was it? A couple months later, I just out of the blue at like literally 2 a.m. I call them <laughs> and I was like, we are doing this. Like let's full board hundred percent. Let's get on this. It. And the and, one thing uh, people don't realize Zach is that Joe Messina is the only guy on this planet that would be up at 2 a.m. Probably working still. I think <laughs> that's very, it's a very underestimated oh, fact yeah. of this. People are like, Oh Zach, why would you do that to a man? No, Joe's awake. He's either having his 12th coffee from the day yesterday or his first coffee <laughs> of the day. Next day. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That that's jumping Joe Messina there for you. Yeah, that is. absolutely. That you is. Know, that's you know when he approached me when we first met, like what was it? Over <laughs> ten years ago. <laughs> oh man, it's yeah, like, be like well, you need a new goalie. You know, I mean, so Tyler wore one. Of, hey, Tyler wore one of our masks. Gosh, Definitely. Joe. Joe is a goalie coach slash salesman, and it depends on which day it is, which comes first for him. Let me tell you, yeah, he, well, he tried to sell a me a, packs, a he of... figures out how to do them both at the same time. Hey, I would be selling. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let's be honest. I remember when we first, when we started Joe, you and I, I was wearing Graha issued coho pads that eventually turned into those Brian beast pads. And I had my Fair only, enough. Oh my gosh. Still the best pads I think I've ever worn. Well, no, if you, you had those, you, you bring those, them up. Oh my God, we can make some well, so he had the Felix yeah. Potvin. Yeah, they're oh. a yellow, red, white, mm-hmm. blue. They were amazing. I'm sure they were you, gorgeous right. pads. Those things well, were and, sick. and the funny part about it was at uh, Davenport practice a couple weeks back since we've been shut down and everything, I was talking to Joe, and we were talking, hey, does Tyler still have those Beast pads, those really, oh my really gosh. cool ones? Of course we don't have them because they weren't uh, well, they weren't weren't necessarily yours. Those were the like, no, community I, no, pads. No, I own they? those. Those beast pads I own. Dad, that was the first pair that Dad actually bought for me. Oh and well, then, I think then they we, must have ended up being sold. I think we, ended but up no, them. I feel like that would have been the perfect pair of pads to be crafted into a designer wallet. I would I would have loved to have a of wallet course. with that. I will say they're, this, they're Alex. Awesome. As soon as we get our time machine, we go back <laughs> twelve years ago when I had those pads. Maybe we can get our hands on those. Maybe. Just have to steal them from younger Tyler. And you want to see younger Tyler cry? No, you don't. So you don't do that. But eh, you always cried anyway. <laughs> That's but, true. Well, we were, I, I was playing for East Grand Rapids, so we lost a lot. So ugh, I mean, that geez. is true. But, Joe, since we're on the topic and, you know, talking about all of the different, you know, buckets you have your hands in. Last time we had you on the show, the pandemic was in the early stages. And obviously hockey has been affected by it. Has there been any challenges for you guys during these crazy times? Um, to be honest with you, like we, we talk daily about just trying to stay relevant with what's going on. Obviously with, you know, social media, there's a lot of unique things that are, that are happening. Obviously right now we're sitting in, you know, post Thanksgiving. So with the black Friday and over the weekend sales and cyber Monday and, moving into our, our new collection, collection number seven, that's coming up here in the next couple of days. So there's a lot of things that we try to stay on top with, whether there's a pandemic going on or not. Um, you know, a lot of people have been uh, accessible with their computers and telephones just because they've been not at work, they've been not at school, they may be at home. So we just hammer social media a lot. I mean, probably four, five, six times a day on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and we just try to really stay out there every day with content just because we have thousands of followers now. And it's been amazing to see how it's grown over the last basically two years from starting with, you know, n- nobody following us and not really understanding what we do to now we have, you know, between our two social media as well over 25,000 followers. Um, and to us, that's a lot, you know, for you know, just starting off and being two years into it and having such a good following in such a short time, it really makes it easy for us to get content out there, get information out there to people. And that just really, you know, just sort of translates into sales and 
people referring us to other people and, you know, Christmas gifts and holiday gifts and birthday gifts. So it's, uh, you know, pandemic or not, we, we, we really like to talk about the pride that we put into each of our pieces. Our leather team is, we've kept them busy through this whole thing, you know, um, and we have our leather team right here in Grand Rapids, right in our backyard. So for us to be able to work with them on a daily basis and go over there and see how they're doing and just checking in on how our collections are coming along and some new stuff that we have coming out that's going to be um, not leather goods. We actually have uh, some really cool stuff coming out here shortly. Um, that's going to be sort of stuff that we worked on for the last couple of months to be unique for the winter months and even the holidays, but just outside of the leather goods. Right. And, okay. that, and that's funny. That's one thing too. Cause my wife, cause when I told her, I'm like, Hey, we're getting these cool shirts from sex string leather company. Of course we have our merch as well. She's like, Oh my gosh, more shirts for you guys. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, these are awesome shirts. But then she saw the Osgood pillow, Joe. And she almost was like, <laughs> like that we need to have. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right, uh, here you go. And she's like, okay, maybe I'll get it for Christmas. And I'm like, well, that's not a Christmas gift now, but I well, mean, I'll give you a little hint. What we have coming out here, uh, in the next couple of days is going to be right in your wife's wheelhouse. You're going to have some stuff added to your family repertoire. That's going to be fantastic in the end of the household. Hear that, hon? Joe's got gifts for you. Oh, sweet Jesus. Yeah. I, wonder if, I wonder if she heard that. <laughs> yelling, <laughs> yelling to the peanut gallery as always. Well, I love it. Well, now the dog's going to come running to the door. You know that for sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but, I mean, Zach, this well, is... I'll, I'll, oh. not, like, I'll be honest with you. With, with, during the pandemic, like we really thought, like, hey we're not just a leather company. We are a, a goods company that supplies not just leather goods, but other things outside of leather wallets yeah, and right. just to keep on expanding the, the line. I mean, you talked about it with the shirts. Um, we really want to get into apparel. We want to grow our apparel brand. We want to really expand, not just having like our name on the apparel. It looks great, but we want to really branch off and do some cool designs and, and uh, unique stuff and, we're actually in the process of working on some new stuff for even spring of 2021 um, for apparel and uh, some other unique sports. So it, it's yeah. we, we got some stuff that's in the in the barrel that's pretty exciting that's coming out here in uh, in the spring of 21 and even like uh, the summer as well. Well, well, that's just been the crazy thing, too, because when we kind of started working together, when we started to go live and stuff here, Joe, we you guys only had the one T-shirt at the time and the one type of sweater. Yeah. And I have this. You got the fisherman jack that Alex, for some reason, doesn't want to take his hoodie off because <laughs> apparently it's too cold in the office. But Zach, yeah. Zach, in the over this time, and I, I will say the last year, because obviously the entire history of second string leather is over a two year span. But recently. You know, because I have a wallet myself, and I, like I said, the wife likes the pillow, and there's so many different items that Second String Leather Company has. What has been, in your eyes, at least from what you've seen, has been the most popular item that has been purchased from Second String Leather Company? Oh, wow. Well, that's, that's a tough one. I mean, it depends, you know, each collection is different with uh, the different variations of colors, the, uh, the pad designs, mm -hmm. and the uh, pad brands themselves but uh there was a point where the watch band was a very hot seller like it was flying off the shelf yeah um but as far as a wallet goes i would probably say uh six slot vertical has been our top seller mm -hmm. um actually that's the wallet i have now um so i think tyler might have that same one too the, wa the waffle board one or yep yeah. oh yeah yeah mine's not the waffle board one but uh, same, same. That's style. probably another one that's probably really good. Yeah, that one is our actually design. lately. That one has been very hot. So um, that was actually a great, great idea of our team to come up with that uh, style of a wallet, and it's just been a knock out of the park there. So, um, but yeah, everything, everything's been uh, selling pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that six cloud wallet's been really good. Uh, the watch bands, like I said, keychains are good. Keychains are oh, a yeah. good one. Uh, those are a great price point for people. Uh, but yeah, everything, everything's actually been going very, very well. Yeah. And you, you bring up the, the concept of the, the watch bands that you guys offer on the, on the website. Now there you do guys, you guys do offer eye watch bands and obviously that's perfect for people that have the you know the, the eye watches that go with it and I, I personally have an iphone so that goes great with all the stuff that i have 
But is there something that we could see with regular watches? Because I mean, Tyler has his own that he has, and I know a lot of people would be willing to change, you know, their regular watches over where whether it's a metal band or a a flimsy thing mm-hmm. with some hockey, you know, lace, whatever. Yeah. Would we mm-hmm. be able to see some leather regular watch bands coming out soon? There actually is uh, somebody actually sent us a photo uh, probably a week or two ago that he converted his normal watch with our watch band, yeah, with our iWatch band. Oh, oh. yes. Okay. Instead, of, instead of using the iWatch class, he yep. ended up just putting the band onto his um, normal watch. I don't know if it was a fossil or whatever it may be. Yeah. So but you can I, do so, that. Yes. So you're telling me there's a chance. So you're telling me there's so a it, chance. It gets really difficult because with the, uh, with I think the Galaxy or the Fitbit, the, the Fitbit's a totally different class. The class, yeah. it's, it's sort of, um, you, you, it's almost like worked into the material. Right. So it's, it's sort of very difficult to, to work with those bands where the iWatch band is really a metal clasp that you click on and we actually have a die that, that cuts out the, the watch band. So it works perfectly. I mean, we've sold, I mean, hundreds of those yeah. over the last two years in different styles. And, and we have like some elite branding ones that has the names on them now. And, and we've really taken it a, a push further with the, with the tech, like with text on the band, like the bands now. So it's not just solid colors. It's actually logos and branding on there as well. And I, I think what separates ours from others is, we we like to do the two different colors, whether it be a uh, the blue on the longer part and the shorter part be yellow, you know, like right. Michigan colors, you know, instead of just being solid blue with the yellow stitching. So it's uh, we try to make them unique in different colorways to attract the our our customers, basically. Yeah, so, yeah. and that, I, you guys honestly, definitely. That's, oh, go ahead, Joe. I would say the, 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 the most unique thing about the company is trying to understand our customer because it changes daily. It, it truly is amazing. Cause like one day we'll be selling a ton of leather wallets. The next day we'll go apparel. Then we'll go pillows. It's just, it's all over the map. So to try trying to understand our customer on a, a daily basis has been a fun challenge and just trying to, and again, we, we pride ourselves on, you know, answering emails, answering text messages or private messages uh, emails are a big thing, you know, obviously getting stuff shipped out within 24 hours, especially during the holidays is another important thing that we pride ourselves on. So we get a lot of feedback from customers like, wow, that's already shipped and it's already to my door within like 48 hours. That's incredible. And like that, just trying to build that, you know, rapport with our customers because we want them to a tell a friend and B be a repeat customer in the near future for <laughs> other wallets. I mean, we, <laughs> I know kid. We have people that have literally six to ten wallets of ours, like wow. further, yeah, and they just rotate them, and it's just it's. Well, when one of the guys said, "Well, women have their purses and their shoes. Why can't guys have their wallets?" Yeah, that, that is was, true. That thank is you. True, and you guys, you, you guys really do have a lot to choose from. And I mean, Tyler, met, you know, hangers on me for not having the shirt on, you know, pres- being presented out to the public. Kelly the cranked the heat up to like You're seventy-five in here. Yeah, I, I, I am repping some sort of hockey here. He's got the hurricane. But I, I do have to say, I, I have gotten flack from my own significant other for wearing my second string leather sh- company shirt so much because it is such a high quality shirt and it's it's soft to the touch i don't have to worry about it getting destroyed and even even though it's not one of your leather products it just goes to show that even if it's not one of your you know original things that you sold and it's not one of the highest things that you know one of the most purchased things on the website it still has that craftsmanship that quality there and with you, that you would, in mind, you would never have guessed that he works for Davenport Marketing. You would never you have guessed. Never that. would have guessed it. <laughs> but, but with standing, <laughs> with Perfect. that in mind, you have all these products that you currently have, and you mentioned that you have stuff that's coming out. But as of right now, every company has a milestone, especially that they have to put into compliance with everything that goes along with COVID. What is Second String Leather Company's current? goal or the next milestone that they see themselves achieving? Wow. That's we actually a good question. We, we have stumped them. Uh, well, <laughs> yep. I, I don't know if it's, uh, 
our, I think our milestones are like every collection launch because it is a big undertaking uh, with our leather team. I mean, they work like relentless for like two months straight of like building out these pieces. Our new collection, I think Zach, so Zach does a lot of our photography. So some of the photos that you see on the Instagram and Facebook are all from Zach. And they're just like lights out. So from the photography standpoint to the craftsman of like the craftsmanship of each piece to even uploading them to the website and getting those dialed in with their IT guy, like it is literally a full team effort because it's a long process. Because I think right now we have with the new launch, there's probably over 2,000 photos. Oh, yeah. At least I mean, easy 2,000 photos to take in. Edit. And you know, edit. Make, make them nice. It's... So I think the, the milestone is it literally resets itself after each collection because we get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, we've been talking about like what's the next step for our company because it's it has only been two years or less than two years. But, yeah. you know, we're always pushing. Like, I mean, there's, there's really no reason to be content. I mean, if you're going to be content, we would have stayed in sort of like the same realm we were at with collection number one and we're moving on to collection number seven right now that's our biggest at least in my opinion probably our best from like colorways just unique leathers that we're going to offer like we haven't really shown some of the leather that we're going to be offering uh in the pieces uh as of yet it will be shown later this week but there's just some like really unique stuff that we're gonna be offering with the four wing leather we have like an italian leather that we're using that's Ooh. just like kick ass hey. i mean it's <laughs> It's actually, it's called Italian. ghost. It's called ghost butter row. It actually wears. So like the more you wear it, it actually goes, the reason why they call it ghost, because it starts off with like a, a whitish white, film. Yeah, white film on it. And the more you wear it and use it, it like. The color comes through. Comes through. So there's actually like two layers of color in the, the wallet. So it's really unique and different. And, you know, again, we're just trying to challenge our leather team with unique stuff and having them hunt down some real unique Horween leather. I mean, obviously, uh, we've we've shown that we have the Cadobin Winter Classic glove and blockers. So even pairing that up with some really high end Horween leather, and it, it's just lights out. I mean, I, I it's really tough to describe it. I mean, some of these pieces, I, I tell people, you know, there's a there's a story in every wallet. But it's a conversation piece. That, and like that's like really the easiest way to put it. Like each wallet has its own story because it is one of one. It's unique. It's different. You're never gonna have two wallets that are the same. And every piece has a story. Just every piece has a story in each wallet. Yeah. And as far as like our goals go, it's like we always try to better ourselves. Like what can we do better? You know, like from the photography standpoint mm -hmm. or from the. Um, the products that we're coming out with it's just we're always trying to make it one step better you know so it's having that goal in mind of wanting to do one better is that's where we strive for absolutely and that's something obviously every company wants to do you always you want to find a way to become like hey this is something that's nationally known and i mean joe you told me about when you guys were at you know the michigan state championships where people are just coming it's like whoa what is this and i go I go to ranks or I even shoot if I'm at a grocery store or whatever, and they see me pull out this odd looking wallet and they're like, what is that? And I show them. And thankfully I got the second string leather business cards in that wallet. And it's <laughs> very, it is, I will say this, I, cause I can't do the billfold ones, Alex. Remember the big one that pops gave me? Yeah. Really it's just too big for me. So unfortunately now they have like two ID cards, four credit cards, business cards, cash and all that stuff. My driver's license, a little tight. So I may need to transfer to one of those awesome billfold wallets, but there you go. I mean, it's 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 awesome because Joe, it's not and Joe and Zach, it's not just you know just random gear that's getting dropped on your guys' doorstep. You know, Joe and I we talked about it. You know, there are pro goaltenders, former and present, that are just you know that you guys are getting this gear from. Tell us about a few of the guys that you've worked with over the time here at Second String Leather. Um, you know, Thatcher Demko. Uh, I've known him since he was. Uh, you know, a teenager. So we've gotten a few pieces from, uh, you know, various teams that he's played for. Um, you know, it, it, it's actually pretty cool because we actually just sent uh, Darren Pang. Um, you know, he's the St. Louis Blues uh, uh, color guy, commentator. He mm -hmm. does a lot of stuff for various uh, XM radio. I mean, he's Olympics, obviously playoffs. I mean, he's he's big name. In the NHL. Big name. Um, we actually are going to be uh, launching the Panger Pro Series. So we actually have pieces that he, he sent us 
um, two pairs of pads and a glove and blocker from his time in Chicago that we are going to be able to release to the public. But in turn, you know, he's been following us for a year and a half now on social media and, and he wanted some pieces for himself and his family. So we, uh, we sent it out right before Thanksgiving. I got it on Friday and he's like blown away. I mean, it was pretty cool. I mean, Zach talked to him on the phone and obviously he's a big, well-known individual in the hockey world. And, um, to offer stuff to, you know, to him, we've done stuff with, uh, uh Henrik Lundqvist, the Lundqvist, uh, foundation with the, uh, the ambassador program. So we have the Henrik Lundqvist pieces. We've uh, sent some stuff to Kevin Weeks. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it just, it, there's always, uh, there's a Garrett Sparks, you know, so there, it, it's just, it, it, the hockey world's a small niche community. And I, I really feel that, um, when you're making quality leather goods and in the best part about it is I think when we send, you know, people are buying these offline, so they don't really get the touch and feel them unless we're at either a, uh, like we've done the Griffins game before we've done um, in Minnesota, we did the high school hockey championship. Those are the only like really places where people can actually like feel them and touch them yeah. and see them in person. So everyone's going off our website and that's a testament to Zach that like the photography is like lights out. So people feel comfortable like, wow, that's actually really nice i really want to buy that it's better than the picture it's better than the picture so when they get get the box and they open they're like holy smokes this is this is legit this is something that i'm not gonna be able to buy at, at my local you know store where it's like off the shelf cookie cutter um you know these are truly you know hours upon hours of man made leather goods that are like physically made from start to finish yeah. by hand and that that truly has uniqueness and and uh, specialty to it so it, it's it's pretty cool to see how people's like reactions are like they'll, they'll email us right when they open their gift or like when they get uh like we've done a few custom pieces as well uh for other various people outside of the nhl um and they just they're just blown away i mean it's just it's something that has you know significant value and meaning to them as well so yeah and our leather people they they blow us away. Yeah, they do. Like, they're, they're every time we go in there, we're just like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. how? Like, how do you even do that? Like, and, it's, and it's it's funny how our leather craftsman, his name is Jacob Brown. He's he's like likes out. I mean, he's he's a whole nother level. I mean, he's very meticulous. He doesn't let anything leave the shop unless it's like 100%. Like he's this that meticulous about and again, it's, 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 it's a, it's a work of art. Each piece is a work of art, like how he puts things together, how he stitches them. And we've challenged him with some unique stuff from like the leather to design to coming up with some cool stuff. And he's, yeah. he, we keep him on his toes. He keeps us on his toes and it's a great, it's a great relationship. And it's, it's someone, again, like I said, he's right here in Grand Rapids. He's, he's one of our close friends. He, he's, he's an intricate part of our, our company just because, you know, we have like this, this tight knit design group that produces great pieces every every couple months and we're excited to get them out there to the public yeah and you guys have the best products on the market you talk about how it's a niche community and honestly hockey is the biggest niche community there possibly could be second string leather company dot com second string leather dot com excuse me instagram second string leather company at second string leather company on facebook second string lc on twitter is there anything else we can get from you guys before we send you off? No, no, I, I you know we appreciate you, uh, you guys having us on. I, 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 I love to have you guys. So that's the other thing that we're in the process of building a studio. <laughs> um, I love to have you guys come back out when the studio is done and actually do a live show at at the uh, at the studio. That well, would, we'd absolutely cool. love to do that. Alex is one request. I met when he mentioned it to me and we talked about it. He is one request, Joe. Is it insulated for his for his <laughs> sake? Because apparently he can it wear a T-shirt. It is fully finished. You guys will be in a great hockey barn atmosphere. Oh, I mean, perfect. Cool we'll, have to, we'll have to do a... It might be more like an 80-degree type version. You want 80 cow. degrees in there? I'll be going Send shorts in January. I'll just walk in. Oh, I love it. We'll Go have on. to do a, a live show. We'll do a, a live 100%. tour on Instagram Live. All that good stuff. We can do. A, we have a camcorder, Alex. We can do a live thing. We can just turn the camera, you know? We Joe will be there. He's not going to be doing anything. He we can take the camera and show his, show his place around. So much opportunity. We'll have a, we'll have like a, we can talk. Hopefully at that time we can maybe even talk uh, NHL hockey. Hey, we could, we could do hockey. 
You can always talk NHL. Just what context can you talk about NHL? Exactly. 1980s. We can talk about how Darren Pank's pads (laughs) that Joe probably got probably had a combined goals against average of 4.3, probably (laughs) back in those Hawks days. But oh man, this was fun, guys. It's always fun talking about you know goalie pads. Obviously, me, not you. It's okay. You're you're on you're on the special ed members of the goalie union with your lacrosse goaltending. But thank you guys, Zach Wilson, Joe Messina, the co-founders of Second String Leather Company, joining us here on TKS, folks. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about well. Hopefully some hockey. We'll talk about some NHL players that want to fight people, apparently. And we'll also talk about some more college hockey as well. (laughs) Joe, Zach, thank you guys once again. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye now. All right. We'll be back here on The Kewl Show. Drink aid, ready for distribution worldwide. And we are back here on 12 Ounce Sports. Thank you once again, once again to Joe Messina and Zach Smith. Zach Smith. And not I, I, Jack I texted Wilson, him right after. I, Mac Wilson, not Zach Wilson. No, Zach Smith. I, it's funny. I texted him right as it happened, to, right after it happened. Because I'm like, oh, because, okay, a quick side story. There was a guy that I worked with who actually is from Canada who played hockey in Canada. Played baseball at Davenport. He had this is because it's spelled Z A C, just like Zach Smith's name, uh-huh. and is Zach Wilson. And I remember for some reason it kept coming to my head, and I'm like, "Boy, I hope I don't butcher this live on the air." You poor soul. I butchered it so hard. It was, and I and I and I do feel genuinely bad. Let's see, did he text back? He said, "L." Joe said, "LOL, no worries." So hopefully, hopefully, no hard feelings, right? No hard feelings. I hope that's what that means. Yeah, but thanks once again to Joe Messina and Zach Smith for being on the show talking about their products and the great partnership that we've been able to garner with them. If we will talk about their custom program, the different 
uh, collections that they have, the Elite Collection, all that good stuff. And you at, can do your own custom gear as well, which I may do if I can't. Right. If I can't sell those pads, I may have to do it. Yep, the custom programs, not just for goalie gear, they also do player gear as well. Yeah, you can check yeah, out the yeah, custom yeah. gallery to look at that stuff. The goalie logo is better. SecondStringLeather.com. Yes. Now, but, Tyler. Yes. It's time for your part of the show. My part of the show. Your part of the show. Are you talking about college Get hockey? Get the sc- out! College hockey scoreboard time here on TKS. Let's go through last week's action here, folks. Monday and Tuesday, a couple of Big Ten matchups. Minnesota on Monday beating Ohio State by a score of 4-1. to Wisconsin beating Penn State 6-3. On Tuesday, Minnesota completed the weekend sweep with a 2-0 win over the Buckeyes. Scott Reedy, four goals in his first four games for the Golden Gophers. Wisconsin knocking off Penn State with a 7-3 win. Cole Caulfield, the hat trick. Robbie Baydoon in that series, Alex, 84 saves for the badges. Crazy. We jump to Friday, a game you don't see on the board there, but it's Air Force getting knocked off there by AIC, last year's Atlantic Hockey regular season champions. AIC wins by a score of 3-1. to one. Canisius knocking off Robert Morris, two goals for Matt Long in the 5-2 win for the Golden Griffins. In Big Ten action, Notre Dame on Friday night won, wins 3-2 to two with a great game out of Ryan Bishop, the Fighting Irish goaltender, makes 32 saves for Notre Dame. Even though it's Notre Dame, but you know what I mean. Hockey East, a big top, big 10 matchup. Number seven, UMass traveling down to play at Boston College, number two in the country. Eagles win 4-3. Jack McMahon, a pair of goals for the Eagles in a non-conference action. RIT wins a crazy 8-5 game over Clarkson. The game went back and forth. There were actually a total of five goals Alex scored in that third period. The Tigers with the win. Will Calvary picking up the hat trick for the lovely RIT Tigers. The smart kids, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, we're labeled wrong? Oh, well. We're labeled wrong anymore. <laughs> Our friend just showed us that we're labeled backwards. Our the, friend, my girlfriend. Your girlfriend's. Well, yes, you're right. But anyways, long story short, getting to Saturday before I was really interrupted by the fact that I don't care who is labeled for because let's okay, it's flipped, Alex. It's okay. College hockey scoreboard. You're distracting me now. <laughs> so Atlanta hockey. AIC completes the weekend sweep with a 2-1 win over Air Force. Robert Morris come back with a win. Grant A. Bear one goal, three assists, four points in the Colonels win. 5-4 win over Canisius. Randy Hernandez, second game-winning goal of the season for the freshman. Big Ten action. Notre Dame was able to complete the sweep with a 2-1 win over the Wolverines. Michigan State, an upset win. Nicholas Mueller, the game-winning goal in overtime. 3-2 win for Sparty. Arizona State knocks off Wisconsin, another wild one. Demetrius Kuzmantis and Willie Canaram with each having two goals for Arizona State. And, the, of course, the big, the big matchup we were talking about with Hockey East, Boston College completing the weekend sweep over UMass with a 6-3 win. Mark McLaughlin, a pair of goals for Boston College. Spencer Knight, the Mike Richter nominee last year, 30 saves. On Sunday, Michigan State unfortunately couldn't complete the sweep. Tommy Napier's 42 state performance for the Buckeyes was able to save face with Ohio State getting a 2-0 win. Arizona State over Wisconsin. Yeah, I got it right. I got my scoreboard right. I know what I'm doing. My goodness, Alex is over here trying to yell at me. Arizona State beating Wisconsin 3-1. to one. Apparently, Wisconsin had a lot of guys out due to COVID, unfortunately. But Jackson Murray had a pair of goals. Evan DeBrower, 28 saves. RIT, unfortunately, they couldn't complete the weekend sweep. Clarkson wins 5-1. to one. Grant Cooper with a pair of goals for the, goal, for the Golden Knights. Chris Oldham, 30 saves for them as well. And that is your college hockey scoreboard. That is a lot of me talking. Holy cow, that's a lot. It's only going to get worse, too, Alex. You want to know why? Why? NCHC starts tomorrow. That is true. We have hockey every single day of the week. I throw the it's kind of like it's kind of like college football. Well, you know, well, well, Maxion, well, friend of the show. I mean, friend of me, who, which since I am part of the show, friend of the show, Jamie DeVoe, James DeVoe, for Davenport Jamie. University. He he's a he's a big CMU guy. Went there. He uh he's all for the fighting seas, the the chips, the chips, the Chippewa, the chippers. However, whatever they're calling. I know. Themselves. Well, Adam Jack talks know, about Maxion. Max, well, that's in the well, middle of the week. Max, well, that's their Mac only football. time they can get on national television. That is true. But that's, hey, I mean, you have NCHC during the week. You can have big games on the weekend. Fun fact, though. Fun fact: When you look at all of the big names when it comes to college hockey, two, well, let's just say two universities have probably the best Instagram pages in all of collegiate sports. Can you guess them? Can I guess them? If I guess when it comes them. to hockey, and that's men's and women's. Men's. Can and you I'm guess? I'm gonna say men's and women's. I'm gonna say Minnesota. You would think so. However, it is in fact Boston College, 
and Boston University. Really? Yeah, the Terriers and the Golden Eagles. Hmm. They have probably, arguably, arguably. the best collegiate hockey Instagram pages on Instagram. Hmm. The Instagram pages on Instagram. A little bit redundant, but you get the Incredibly point. Incredibly redundant, Alex, but it's okay. But. Yeah, but. But. Talking about butts, a butt whooping happened. Oh, man. Well, okay. So, yes, this is going to be slightly hockey, slightly non-hockey talk. Mike Tyson got into a match. It was in a boxing match. It was a draw. <laughs> a draw. Literally, okay, I'll be honest with you. Having watched the fight illegally, of course, because I'm not paying 50 bucks to watch two old men fight. Shh, you're not supposed to admit that. I didn't tell him where I watched the stream. But all I'm saying is this. It was fixed because let's or it wasn't fixed. It was fixed to have an even draw because hey, there's two old guys fighting, the two legends going at it. It's just gonna be all for fun and games. No well, nobody Mike wants Tyson, their reputations hurt. Well yeah, Mike Tyson won that match though. Having watched it and just listen, it was not gonna be any knockouts He's still like that. iron Mike Tyson. Okay, now so, that this is mess has been done, can we please have the new version of Mike Tyson punch out? Well, I that, wanted well, an updated version for the Nintendo Switch. That way I can play it on my girlfriend's Switch. I'm just saying, hey, if NHL 94 can do NHL 94 Rewind, if EA Sports can do that, I'm pretty sure somehow Nintendo can pull out a retro Mike Tyson. But NHL 95. NHL, okay. Well, NHL 95 is weird because... Well, Why you not? Can, you, you, can create, you can edit players and stuff like that. But, I mean, well, have you did, did you ever try the NHL 94 Rewind when you came over last yeah. week? Is, I mean, I, I like it. Yeah, it's okay. different. It's okay. not the same if we like we busted out the Sega right now. It wouldn't be the same. I'm just saying. It's a it's a hard day when you're playing something that looks like NHL '94, but the Dallas Stars destroy the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> That's true. That is incredibly true because Jamie that, Ben messed me up. <laughs> because back in '94, ladies and gentlemen, it was the Mike Madano and the Starettes and the Madanettes against the. Almighty powerful Steve Ayers, Medina Sestrelli, uh, not quite Russian five yet. They didn't have Fatisov yet. They got traded later on. They got traded in 94, 95, and they didn't have Larav yet because he Did was they with. still have Shovel Day? Or... Yeah, they had Shovel Day. That's right. This was before Essenza got traded Damn over from Winnipeg, Shovel. and this was before Chris Osgood really came on because rookies were not a thing in those games. The, if you ever had a rookie, like a first-year guy in a video game, it's because that was his second season he played the year before because Darren McCarty would have been on that roster because 93-94 was his first season. That is true. And that was not mentioned in the NHL 94, at least the original. But Kosher anyway, was on that team, though. Kosher was not. He was on the 94 Rangers. He was at the Rangers. Oh, that's... No, uh, no that's yes. right. you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Because that's why Joey Kosher went in with the reputation 97. All right, guys, I've done this thing before. By that, I mean I sat up up in the press box with Eddie Olchek watching the games because I never played. Yeah, sat up in the press box, and then when it was called on him, well, he used his fist. Joey, Similar to the guy that we're going to talk about right here. All right, so the one of the undercard matches, which was honestly very looked – I mean, I was kind of excited for it because I couldn't believe it was actually happening. Nate Robinson taking on – Not Nathan Robinson. Not not, not, not GR great. Not Nathan Grant Robinson. Griffin great, Nate Robinson. We're talking basketball – Superstar, three-time slam dunk champion Nate Robinson going up against the what, what's his nickname? I, it was like the the um, oh, I forget his nickname now because it was so dumb. It was like the the menace child or something like that. Jake the, Paul, the menace child. It was the the problem child. Excuse me, that was his nickname. That's the problem what, child. That apparently is Jake Paul's I don't nickname. Know. I just know him as Logan Paul's somehow more just stupid brother i will say this he is more stupider at one point justin he's so stupid he's more stupider at one point justin bieber was the most the worst thing that could have came out of canada somehow the paul brothers overtook that by a long shot wait they're from canada i I believe so logan paul yeah that's sad i believe logan paul's from canada i'll look it up you just keep logan paul is it i thought he was from canada no american youtuber logan paul oh Hey, someone said he was from Canada, okay? No, he's from Ohio, which is worse. Okay, so pretty much, yeah. He's Same in thing. the dirt of South. Whatever. <laughs> they're both dummies, okay? Anyways, Logan Paul, Jake Paul are both idiots. Anyway, so the match happens, and second round, Jake Paul knocks out Nate Robinson after knocking him down twice before. Sure. Like, knocked him out. Like, Nate Robinson didn't stop himself from falling down this time. He went like, Audi like a belly button. Like, out. Audi 500. Not out. good. 
anyway, so that happens, and my, my buddy and I were watching. We're like, oh, my Lord, this actually happened. And so right after that, Twitter goes ablaze. Bigger than the Jones and Tyson fight, all right? Even though the fact that Michael Buffer did his old intro and actually did it very happy. Well, think about it. The people that actually know Mike Tyson for being Iron Mike Tyson, other than watching the, like, Sports Center top tens or whatever greatest hits of the nineties. Yeah. Those people are less active on Twitter. But then again, you also have to throw in the fact that it's one of the Paul brothers, which is a huge social media storm because if you have either Jake Paul or Logan Paul, apparently you have a pay per view. Even though they're not real boxers. I'm well gonna say apparently this. apparently You're Paul not wants a to be. real boxer. They, I will say this. The best thing they about They can they can want to be all they want. But they're always going to be known as those YouTube guys that are in a boxing ring. They're yes. not like Mike Tyson, who is a boxer boxer. Hell, hell, let's even talk about, he's not even Conor McGregor, who is a world champion MMA fighter who decided to step in a boxing ring. Yes. Nowhere close to that. They can have as many wins as they want, but unless they win against true fighters, against real boxers... And win. Real boxers. They still will just be those stupid YouTube guys. Yes. So that's why after Jake Paul knocked him out and said he'd fight anybody, I think he name dropped McGregor too during his interview. He did. Yes. So. Well, no, he said what he said in his tweet was, why would I talk about fighting McGregor? And then he commented to somebody else saying, we'll talk soon. Hmm. Interesting. But anyway, so. Because why bring it up when you know it's already going to happen? I'm just saying. I want. Well, I want. I want to see. First of all, now watching Jake Paul ma- fight. I, I don't like want. To, I don't want to watch Jake Paul. I want to see him. No, I want to. I want to see, no, see, see Jake McGregor. Paul versus McGregor in an MMA fight. Oh no, not that. I'm not talking about McGregor. I just want to see him to fight an actual boxer, not another internet star, and not a former basketball player. Mike Tyson needs to knock him the <laughs> f. Out. Mike Tyson needs to step into the ring with Jake Paul, and he's fit, dude. He was throwing punches, and I was like. My buddy was like, oh, my gosh, he's going to kill him. Well, yes. Has anyone else paid attention to the training videos that he posts? Don't forget, it's been... He looks like Iron Mike Tyson. Wasn't it like... He three, dropped what? 375 pounds. He got back into his weight class. He's wasn't, a little bit chubby, but wasn't that's what it, happens when you're always old. Wasn't it like 35 years ago this week that Rocky IV was released, or last week, 35 years ago? Don't you remember? Even Drago killed Apollo because Apollo was so old and whatever, but this is different because Mike Tyson actually knows how to fight, whereas Jake Paul knows how to throw punches and stand. Look like he knows how to fight. Mike Tyson doesn't know how to fight. He knows how to kill. <laughs> he knows how to kill. So let's get to the part here where hockey comes into all this. Oh, yes, is, hockey. Welcome to a boxing show. Well, let's see. We've done baseball. We've done football. We've, ding, ding. Have we ever done Round basketball? Round one. Fight. Have we ever done basketball? Have we ever talked about basketball a lot in the show? We have. I pre- oh, yeah, the Raptors won and we were on the show. Anyways. Oh, you talked about the Raptors. I talked about the Golden State Warriors because Kablam. Kobe. LeBron. You said Kobe and LeBron who have nothing to do with the Golden State Warriors. Well, Golden State Warriors, arguably the best team in the past decade, best team in the, you know, current millennia. LeBron James, current best player in the league. Current, not of all time. We're not starting that, okay? We're not going to do that to everybody. Current best player in the league. Kobe Bryant was previously the best player in the league. So I'm just talking about the best. Greatest hits of the NBA. As of right now. But anyway, so long story short, Oh. MJ's in the house, baby. Ooh, sorry, the ball, the ball hit the door, so Kelly's clearly playing fetch with the dog right now. Anyway, hockey. Apparently, Evander Kane came out and said, paraphrasing here, it looks like I have to go fight Jake Paul now. And I do believe Robin Leonard said something as well. And let me it, tell you, I, okay, I will say this: that who was a there was a one fighter that actually learned, like actually boxed, in order to learn how to fight properly. There's, I mean, there's probably a couple guys that did it back in the day, but regardless. Uh, Mac- McCarth- Mac- McCarthy? Oh, um, played for Calgary, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cripes, he had an awful looking helmet. He, he was one that had the dumb Mark Messier helmets, the Winwells. Um, Tim McCarthy? No, no, it wasn't no. Tim McCarthy. He was on uh, the ice gar- that Ice Guard- Guardians movie. Uh, maybe, yeah. Well, of course, I remember in Youngblood, they teach him, they show in Rob Lowe how to box, who learns how to fight. Regardless. But. I looked up at that, I'm like, Evander Kane can fight. The problem is, though, contrary to watching Roy Jones try to fight Mike Tyson, you can't lock up Alex. 
McGratton. That's who he is. Oh, that's a different guy. Oh, McGratton, I'm, I'm, no, he, she straight up learned how to, like, box. box. Yes. But you can't lock up. I mean, I would love to see it. Robin Leonard said it, too, because, well, okay, here's the thing. Everyone talking about Robin Leonard going crazy. Like, they showed him the Buffalo Sabres with the crazy eyes is one of the pictures of him possibly fighting him. Yeah. That was back when Robin Leonard, unfortunately, guys, was not in the best mental state. So, as I mean, I don't want him to revert to that, Alex. So who cares? <laughs> Robin Do it. Murder. Robin Leonard going after Jake Paul would be hilarious back in 2012 or 2013 when Robin Leonard was absolutely bonkers. But, you know, we love hockey TikTok purely on the basis that somebody took a video of Evander Kane in his first fight with the Atlanta Thrashers where he, like, straight up one-punched a dude, but they took Jake Paul's face and put it on him and threw in, like, the Jim Ross, bug out in the stone cold. No, because Alex, his name is Kane. Evander Kane. You just make it Kane. Come out with fire and brimstone. It doesn't need to be stone but, cold. But, no. it, but it was for the meme. Yes, but then, yes, just start. Kane's not a meme. He's a governor. <laughs> Kane is, the, a, mayor, is a mayor. Or whatever. Kane is a mayor of Knoxville. No, excuse me. Glenn Jacobs is the mayor of Glenn Knoxville. Glenn Jacobs is a... Yeah, a former wrestler is well. Then again, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, it's was Tennessee. The Alex. It, Who's it's, the governor? It's Tennessee. So I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the governor of California. I don't want to hear it. I don't want. There should be no reason why anyone says this guy can't be a mayor. Uh, you had an actor play as a governor, except for real though. But anyways, I just like to bring that up because I mean, it'd be interesting. <laughs> it'd certainly be interesting to see. What are you looking up? Hold on, I just want to make sure I got the. Yeah, no, I mean, Ronald Ronald Reagan used to be an actor, but he... You literally person. could have just looked at me and said, who is another politician? I, could I wanted Reagan. to make sure... We want for the Gipper! That's really all I could have done. But New- no, I want hockey play. Well, the funny part is what I... Well, I heard Nate Robinson lost the fight, and I was like, wait a second. Why no. are all these hockey players going after this one dude? It must have been hockey Nate... No, it was a different Nate no, Robinson. No, Nate, not that Nate But Robinson. no, I want hockey community to just... Destroy. Destroy I, this man. Jake Paul. It'd be interesting. I will say that, Alex. I'll give you that. It would be certainly interesting. Inter- I'd rather have Robin. You know who we need. Who you do we know- need? Ty, do you know who we really need? Who we really need? You don't even turn your mic up. Just, well, just for effect. Okay. Now you want effect? Who do we really need, Alex? We need Ryan Reeves. Ryan Reeves? Yeah. Okay. If he wants to, I don't know. It'd be, I mean, because here's the thing, because that's something you have to wait for these guys' careers to end first. Because Evander Kane, I don't want him to ever get hurt. Cause well, apparently, there's a bunch of guys that are thinking about retiring because they don't want to play during COVID. Well, there's a couple because they can come out of retirement. Well, they yeah, like they, PK Subban wants to potentially retire and then come out of retirement. PK Subban, look, I see the training videos with PK and. Uh, Listen, PK Subban is going to be a great. Can we just say the moral of the story is that there's a lot of players that just don't want to play. Not well. Okay, we'll get in, we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. It's because well, the the money is the big problem right now. That's well, and that's what we talked about last week. That's mm. become the big issue. So at but, least if they're retired, they get paid and they don't have to pay escrow. That is true, but we'll get to that. That's later. a fun loophole, by the way, for all of you uh, sports management watchers out there. That's why I wonder why Joffrey Lupa had such a big problem in not playing. Oh, pardon me. Excuse me. He couldn't play, guys. I'm sorry. He had a bad back. My couldn't apologies. Play. Sorry. Sorry, Alex. I, I, I had to get my... Fa- on a serious note, talking about someone who actually can't play, um, Johnny Boychuk. Yes. Former New York Islander, former Boston Bruin, Johnny Boychuk. He actually, he was the guy on NHL that I did that f- yes. famous goal I where knew I you were gonna mention all the way point. down. And Boy. it bounced off the backboards, off the goalie skate, and in. Johnny NHL Boychuk. 11. Johnny Boychuk. Stanley Cup champion, Johnny Boychuk. He has decided to retire from the game of hockey due to an eye injury that he suffered last season. Um, due to this, he decided that he was unable to play, and obviously medical professionals also recommended that he not play. Therefore, he is hanging them up. He is no longer a member of the New York Islanders. And that's a that's a bummer too because I saw his his video. Or I guess during his presser, he when he announced it, you could tell it it hurt because you know he's and I'm not and because it's not like he 
was yes, he was not at his peak, Alex. I get that. No, but he was not. But he had something left in the tank, and that's why it's hard. He for- he was most certainly one of those players that he really played a big part into why they actually made it, made it as far as they did in the playoffs this past season. Because he because he, he was yeah. one of those, even though he wasn't quote unquote a star player, he most certainly was a huge supporting role. He was a big guy in the locker room, literally and figuratively. Yep. And, um, and you know, age 36, he's he's already set for life, but he really could have played a little bit longer. His contract was due to be up in 2022, um, $6 million on the cap. So he's currently on IR um, just because that's how it works as of right now. So well, I feel like there's, there's got to be the official, like, they have retirement to, deal they have to, in order they, to... They, until the retirement paperwork officially goes through within the league and it's accepted by the like the owners, verify all that good stuff. He's currently on IR for that. But um but no, he it, had a really great career. He won a Stanley Cup. Um and, and that's the thing too, like I almost had to remind myself that he was on that team. He was on that team. He was on the team with uh, Marshawn, Chara, Chara I'm that Bergeron. D- I'm this, that, that was decor. Rask's year. No, that was Thomas. Tim Thomas. 2011? Or no, no, no. It was the, the year after that became like Rask's year. No, tw- or well, he was in 2012. But after the 2012, yeah. So Boychuk, that would have been McQuaid, Chara, God, Boychuk. now I need to look up that. It was the 2011 team. 2011 team, yeah. Krug was still at Sparty, so that's not a thing. Krug actually came in the 2013 playoffs. He joined the team after. So hold on. Don't say the names yet. Let me go. So okay. Boychuk, Chara, McQuaid, and I said another one, but I forgot already. Boychuk, McQuaid, Chara. Um, oh, man. Now it's – Come on. Think of a, a really easy one. A it, really easy one. You're going to say it too, but now I'm not going to know because <laughs> I'm trying to remember that team and how – I can remember a lot more of the forwards. Like Michael Ryder was on that team. Pasternak was not even there yet. Nope. He was nowhere near. Bergeron he, was still he's been recent. Bergeron was still young. But oh my gosh. Start saying the names off the defensemen. All right. So well, I'm just gonna go down the no, list. No, not no, even no, just, just not click not, not, no, not, not, not I don't want not I don't want I don't want to hear all the names. Well, I don't defense. care because I'm gonna go down the names. We have uh, Patrice uh, Bergeron, Johnny Boychuk. Okay. Um, these are just the notable ones today. Nachara, uh, Andrew Ferentz. Oh, gosh. Nathan Stupid Horton. Stupid Ferentz. I'd say a different name uh, than Andrew Ferentz, but Matt unfortunately Matt Hunwick. Tomas Caberlet was on that team. Oh, Tomas Caberlet. I forgot that was right after the tra- – because he got traded at the deadline. Yeah. Uh, David Krejci, Milan Lucic, some surprise you didn't mention. Well, Lucic isn't a defenseman. I was thinking well, defenseman. Well, you should have ta- should have thought all of them. Uh, Brad Marchand, Adam McQuaid you mentioned. Uh, Tuka Rask was technically on the team. Oh, he's, uh, he, Mark Recchi was on the team. Mark Savard was on the team. Well, Mark Sick. Savard didn't play, but he was on the team. He yes. was on the roster. Yes. Uh, Seidenberg was on the team. Sagan, Denny Seidenberg. Tim Thomas, obviously. Sean Thornton and Blake Wheeler. Oh, my gosh. Rookie Blake Wheeler. No, wait. Wasn't he traded? Uh, he was traded. No, he was 24 at that time. Was he? But No, because he. I swear he was traded at one point. Hold on. I was thought I didn't think he was on that team though. Yeah, he was. He had eleven goals and sixteen assists. In how many games? Uh, all right. Well, I guess I'll have to look. No, he that. was traded. Ha! He was traded to Atlanta. Right? Yes, I think so. He still got a ring for it though. Oh yeah, the same way Mike Knubel got a ring for the his role in the ninety. He still <laughs> his name's on the cup. So technically, he is a Stanley Cup champion. Yeah, Mike Knubel's a Stanley Cup champion. Shush. I don't want to hear it. I never, I didn't say anything bad about Mike Canoeball. No, you want, you want to fight? Let's go. I, I I'll can, call mom right now. Well, I'll yeah. say, mom, call up old, 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 old friend of the show. Old, hey, what's your old Mike friend, Knubel. Mike Canoeball, for my sake? But yeah, no, I mean, I forgot. I mean, he's on. in town. Why not? Sure. I'd love to get Mike Canoeball on the show. That'd be cool. We should get Mike Canoeball on the show. Go to a show down at Southside. It's very nice down up there now. Southside. South why, why would we have him over at Southside? Because he works at Fox Motors. Well, I know he works at Fox Motors, but why would we have him at, at Southside? Why wouldn't we go to uh, the stomping grounds? Why wouldn't we go to EK? 
East Kentwood. Because their Wi-Fi sucks. Because <laughs> their suck. Wi-Fi sucks. No, it is pretty garbage. I love Phil Sweeney. Hey, yeah. but hey, at least they have a really cool goal horn. No, that thing's it's a on a rope. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally a truck horn that they attached. Anyways, so yes, um, Johnny Boychuk, tough to see him go, but truck. At least it's at least it's good he's able huh? to get out, you know, with full health. Meh. Most not me. full full health. I'll say this: Brian Berard was able to play after his eye almost got poked out, but obviously it may have been different. And obviously Berard, Berard, Brian Berard didn't play for I think two years, so that's. Obviously, maybe Boychuk comes back in a couple of years, but right now he's not able to play. Hey, Daniel Bryan was forced to retire from wrestling. And guess what, Alex? He's still a wrestler because he was able to come back. Technology, man. Okay. I don't know if it'll help Boychuk or not, but I'm just saying. I'm trying to think optimistically maybe for John, him. Man. Johnny Boychuk, if it's really bad, he can be the Nick Fury of hockey. You just wear an eye patch. Be a bad Cause, looking mother effer. Because that's safe. He'll be the pirate of hockey. The pirate of hockey. Send him to Pittsburgh. Did you actually did you actually know that there used to be a Pittsburgh Pirates hockey team? Yes. Yes, okay. You did know that. Yes. Excellent. I was aware. Okay. They played for one year. Literally one season. Them and the Philadelphia Quakers. They came um, to depression hockey era, guys. That's great. That ta- should be it. Talking about depression. Women's hockey. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> that was a bad segue. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Uh well, we can be slightly depressed that they are not playing at their home arenas, but we are excited that the NWHL has released their plan to play in a bubble. It's going to be over the matter of two weeks, January twenty third to February fifth. They are going to be playing in Lake Placid, New York at Herb Brooks Arena. The same place where in 1980 the United States men's hockey team went up against the Soviet Union. They also won. Played, they also played other teams, Alex. You know, they played like Romania, West Germany, powerhouses like Norway. You know, all those big seven teams. to three seven. beating Czechoslovakia. Well, Czechoslovakia was actually good. That would have been, I believe, around the time. I think the Stasis were playing for that team. They were playing for that team. But, well, that would have been around the time. I don't know about Mary. Well, they were well, they were playing on the Czechoslovakian team because they weren't good enough for the USSR team. <laughs> No, no, because they were Czech. They were the, I, yes, the Stazis were Czech. So when in 98 came around, Peter Stazi played for the Czech Republic, right? No, he played for Slovakia. He played in the 98 games after they had split, but he played for Czechoslovakia. That's how he had to get excommunicated, or he had to leave there, had to sneak out of there with Anton, and then Marion came over a lot safer a couple years later. They both played, all played for Quebec. There you go. You <laughs> figured it out. I, I was getting there. You figured it out. Now I have to look it up. 1998 Nagano hockey rosters. I keep going. Or well, so I guess we can talk about the. Let's talk about the NWHL. Well, yeah. well yeah, that's kind of the topic we're talking about. So, um, I'll keep going on as you look up ahead. and you're going down your rabbit hole. Each team is going to play each other once, which is great. At this, that's one thing that I I like to think about when I, we're talking about leagues like this when they're playing in a bubble. So each team is going to play each other once. Um, with players receiving full compensation um, for the season, just for even playing for the two weeks. So that's great for them. The PWHPA, um, they have their own. They received a sponsor for Sonnet. I want to say Sonnet Insurance. Yep. Um, that's the Toronto regional team. Um, they are now being named Team Sonnet. So kind of um, similar to how, you know, HC Red Bull or, Red Bull FC um, over in Germany. That's a big thing that they have over there. Well, that's but, a, that's just for the Toronto-based team. Well, that's right. That's, right. that's yeah. just okay. for the Toronto-based. But it's similar where the the name sponsor or the sponsor of the, one of the big sponsors of the team is what they're calling the team, what right. they're calling their team. Uh, but going back to the NWHL, so just so we can get on the same page, and I know that some of our listeners weren't able to uh, listen to last week's in, show. Stasi played in the 94 Olympics, not 98, for Slovakia. And yes, he was on the 1980 team. Sorry, I tried to clarify that up. Are we sticking with... Let me go... Are we going with the NWHL team? Well, Good. still going with the NWHL for a little bit. Just, so just so everyone knows, and for those that weren't able to listen last week, make sure to go check out the episode on your favorite podcaster or on TKS Replay. YouTube on, channel, which is, if you're watching on YouTube, it's literally like, you know, you just click our little picture, which would be down here. Wait, wait, no, it'll be down here? Down somewhere below this screen, because I'm trying to remember it's reversed, which is why our nameplates were switched, because I forgot to change that before the show. Yep, but, but for those that 
were not listening or weren't able to listen, make sure to go check out that episode. But Talk to Digit Murphy, who is the uh, was more. She is on because they're in lockdown in Toronto right now. Her Instagram game is strong. Oh, she's on fire. She's, she's on fire. Uh, that girl is on fire. They should go south because fire. she is on Windsor spit fire. Well, they're going to New York, which is down south. It's it's southeast. It is a little, yeah. It's, a little, it's southeast from yes. Toronto. I'm trying. Well, I'm trying to think of the exact geography because it's like uh, saying, "Hey guys, you went up north to Toronto." Not really. Right. Which I mean, hey, at least Lake Placid. That's a perfect neutral ground with a lot of. Um, surrounding infrastructure. So the teams that are going to be involved are the six teams that are in the NWHL as of right now, the Buffalo Buttes, the Boston Pride, the Metropolitan Riveters, which is based out of New Jersey. Riveters. I just had to make sure because I said it Riveteers the first time last week and I felt really bad. You can't. You can't. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, rivet. I said, rivet. I don't know why it came out Riveteers. You, I know can't just, you can't just add ets at the end of everything and call I, it a women's team. I didn't say ets. I said Riveteers. I don't know why I added an extra E in there. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize uh, to my, the teams when I talked to Digit and Digit corrected me and she understood. And, and hey, that's okay. You're supposed to be corrected. This is a, a you know, a newer league and Zach women's Wilson. hockey is. Just, just, <laughs> So those three teams, the Buffalo Buttes, the Boston Pride, the Metropolitan Riveters out of New Jersey. I'm sorry for being based out of New Jersey. Uh, the Toronto Six, the Connecticut Whale, and the White Caps Minnesota. of Minnesota. Look at those sweaters, though, eh? Those are, the, you gotta those, go check those, those out. are sleek. Both Minnesota and Metropolitan Riveters released their jerseys today, and they are they're 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 pretty nice, Alex. The Riveters. I want to see this jersey. Uh, if you should be. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, I say Alex hasn't seen them yet. That's I saw them. Pretty. And of course, Toronto Six has cool sweaters too. But they decided to release them in the summertime. I, I, I guess, I guess they were still waiting for Minnesota and Metropolitan to release theirs. Anyways, a lot. It's great to yeah. see the fact that even though it's not going to be a full season for the NWHL, they're still going to play because even in its in a small capacity, similar to how they did the MLS Cup, Alex. Yeah. Remember how they just kind of jammed it into those two weeks there down in Orlando? Or like the Premier Lacrosse League continue? Yes, and even the, well, even Major League Lacrosse. Or Major League Lacrosse continue. It's going to be a very short season. They play each other once. They determine it from there. Very much like a tournament setup, like a World Junior setup or a World Championship setup. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, I they, am too. They get to play, and they're, I, as far as we know, they're going to be on their Twitch streams, the NWHL and NWHL 2 Twitch streams. Unless, you know, someone gets their head out of their butts and decide to broadcast NWHL hockey live on a network, which I think is possible. Heck, Alex, you may not even have to because, you know, if you have a satellite login or a cable login, you can go on NBCSports.com and watch games that way. I'm not saying any other possible companies could step up, but NBC, you know, they like to have the Olympics, and they're trying to save their butts for this NHL deal. So I why mean, not? I mean, MSG could pull it, and then M- NBC could just go off their feed. Well, I, you could do that as well, but I'm saying like you want to have I a mean, network MSG is because the, MSG is the, a premier. No, well, it's a but that's a for us it's a premium network for us out here anywhere outside of New York. Well, yes, but M, but NBC can pull from their feed if they want to. Correct. Ooh, that'd be kind of cool. Seeing that's what I just said. No, no, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, it'd be nice. Because MSG. W- is oh, Sam the, Rosen calling games. That'd be kind of neat. Sam Rosen, the Rangers broadcaster. I think it'd be cool. Kenny he, Albert. He he's he works for Kenny Albert. Personally, Kenny Albert would be pretty cool as well. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I want there should be more. I mean, especially in the fact that, you know, it's only two weeks. Well, as of right now, it's the only hockey that's currently scheduled at the professional level. Yes. And the NHL still wants to go to December 1st start or January 1st start date, which is (laughs) we'll get to that. But you got about a month. You got about a month. Guys, figure that out. So figure it out, especially. But I, I like it. And going now to the Pro Women's Hockey Players Association, Yes, we talked about it with Melody Daou. Pardon me, I did. No offense, Alex. But I talked about it, and we... I, I'm sorry. I said we, and I it, it's not accurate, Alex. It's a sore <laughs> subject, Ty. I posted it on social media and everything. I was excited to talk about to talk to these two women's hockey trailblazers. But no, no, can't talk. To them, just because I'm not in the studio, because I'm trying to be safe. Because I could email uh, you. Want me to email Melody and have her see if she wants to jump on? No, no? I'll talk to somebody else. Okay, we'll find someone else. We'll f- I mean, we always find people here. There's more show. than one star in that league. I'll talk to Digit though. Digit's fun. Kelly, no, I, Kelly I, likes I was, Digit. I was listening to your interview with Digit, and I was just listening. I was like, Yeah, no, I went to the Toronto Six website. I was like, 
I don't need to buy their gear. Just I don't need to buy their gear. But that white jersey's really cool. That white jersey's cool, man. Oh, I, it's covered in leaves. It's so cool. Oh man, and and Digit was a funny. Like when when my wife can watch an interview, that tells you that she liked it. That she, that she thought it was entertaining. When she can watch an interview with you in it, with me in it. Now, Grand, yes, Digit did most of the talking because that's the point of an interview. Regardless, going back to when I talked to Mel, when I talked with Melly Dau. And we talked about how companies that want to put money towards women's hockey. Because obviously the week before, you know, we talked about Secret, the deodorant company, putting in a bunch of money, $1 million commitment to the Pro Women's Hockey Player Association. Budweiser had a big deal with them before that. Now Sonnet's coming in. Yes, it's just in Canada because, well, Sonnet Insurance is a Canadian insurance company. But the fact that they're coming in and at least, you know, saying, hey, we want to be a part of this, that's big for this game. And that's why, Alex, we talked about it. We talked, and when you and I were discussing women's hockey, having the social media presence and the multimedia presence that the NWHL has and the money that the Pro Women's Hockey Player Association is bringing in with these sponsors and people that are, they're, I'm not going to say fundraising, but they're bringing in money with what they're doing. Well, it's, If it, you're able to combine the two, Alex, you have yourself your own league without having someone else help. Well, right, and I mean, it, it's not necessarily fundraising because that's kind of a no, no. That's it's, I, it's a it's a dark term when it comes to that kind of stuff. But they're it's, getting money towards the cause, towards getting a professional woman. Well, right, with. it's it's money towards the spending budget, and that yes. that's that's kind of how most people um, think about it. And when you when you look at leagues like this, where or it's not necessarily a league, but it's a a competing sports entity. They, you need money to operate, and especially when you're having to, you know, pay these players, and you have to set up, you know, infrastructure and pay for ice time and practices and all that kind of stuff. You obviously need that kind of funding, for the lack of better term. Um, but no, this is really something that's great for the PWHPA to have that kind of stuff um, going on because, I mean, even when COVID is, you know, on the back end of things and we can be able to have in a hockey setting at least have sports fans in arenas and all that kind of stuff. Um, at the women's level, at the very least, it's it's going to be very, you know, kind of, you can speculate that they're not you're not going to have as big of an attendance as a men's right. game would purely on the basis that sometimes these teams, their home arenas are, you know, either community ranks or they're, um, well, they're, they're smaller rinks that are shared with other players or other teams, that kind of stuff. Right. Cause the, because well, even just the CW, because, oh, well, go just ahead. because on the, the basis that, um, the bigger arenas that house, you know, teams like the Buffalo Sabres, the, the Philadelphia Flyers and the well, Boston the, Bruins, like, you the, know, the, I mean, the, the, Boston, the Boston pride is not going to play at TD Garden. They play at their practice facility, which is very nice. Right. So As I mean do, so does so does to the Toronto Six play at the practice facility for no, the Leafs, no, don't no. they? No, they're playing as, as of right now, they're playing at Canland Sports, which is where which is where the first tournament I went to when I was a kid to Toronto, which is nearby. You know what I think? I think the Six should play at Coca-Cola. So, well, that's the thing I was going to mention. Alex. It's really small. Hold on. It's small enough. Hold on. I'm going. Let me go. Okay, go. Uh, I was saying is Lake Canadian, toward their last season, they played quite a few games in Laval because Laval is not that far from Montreal. They no. were playing in Laval, in, and I think the off days for when the Laval Rocket were playing, that's where they played some of their games, which was great. And the Furies, I don't think they played any games at the Coliseum, but I know they played at the MasterCard Center, which is the least practice facility. And I think right now, I believe, like obviously this year they're not going to, so you can really build up a way to try to get that team to get people behind them, to put them in an arena like Coca-Cola Coliseum. Because, and here's the thing, too, Alex, you got to realize, especially next year, and this is simply just talking with other people that have events being planned and, you know, even like, you know, like galas and, you know, like auto shows, stuff like that. A lot of companies are moving them back, and there's going to be a massive jam-packed full of events because Coca-Cola Coliseum, Alex, similar to Scotiabank, they don't just have hockey teams there. They don't just have the. Well, it's it's, it's not going to be a jam packed thing. It's going to be. I mean, like there's gonna be a lot of events a... scheduled back to back to back to back. Is what I'm saying. Well, it's it's just no. It's not even that. It's just how people are scheduled or like venues are scheduling out. Like so, for example, Van Andel Arena, they've already pushed so much stuff back, and it's what it's what they're what they're doing is basically is just taking what they had already in place and then pushing it back to each other. It's not like it's going to be jam-packed, like every single night there's something going on. It's no, they're going to have their normal schedule, 
and pushing it back a couple of years. Yes, they can add stuff on or take stuff away like they would in a normal operating year. But like to your, to your point, I that is what a lot of people are doing is there are there's the they're taking what the venues are doing is just taking all the events and pushing them back a year. And then there's the people that are like, "Well, hey, is there going to be any free space? Can we get in there? That kind of thing. Because I would love to see the Toronto Six playing at Coca-Cola Arena. Because it Coliseum. is... Coliseum, excuse me. I should know this because me and Katie went last uh, spring break to go watch the Marlies play, was which they won. Was it Coca-Cola then? Yeah, it was Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola okay. I forget how, my, how long it's been. It was plastered Coca-Cola everywhere. Yeah, I think it was Coca-Cola. <laughs> remember when... Remember when like, they had a truck out there. <laughs> they had a truck, a Coca-Cola truck. Like, well, and also, like, the entrance way had, like, Coca-Cola stuff all over it. Oh, uh, okay. Really cool. So you're telling me Coca-Cola put a lot of money into sponsoring that barn? Enough. A little bit? Okay. As much as they really wanted to. Um, but I think in the scheme of, like, a 10-year plan, you could probably see teams like this trying to work something out with these different venues or, like, even for, like, well, Buffalo, trying to play where the Buffalo Sabres play and just having it come somewhat similar to what other leagues do when they have a lower attendance is where they just kind of block off the upper area. They cut and down, they cut down concessions and stuff like that just so they have, for one, the access to facilities because that's a huge thing, yep. and then ability to expand seating when possible because with stuff like uh, practice facilities or com- community ranks, which they're not really using... Um, but they they're they're if they are a community rink or they're a shared facility with another program like a collegiate program yeah. they're on the they're on the higher end this this is professional right. hockey even yes. even if it's a women's hockey and it you know it's it's, it's perceived as a lower thing it's still professional hockey guys yeah and even though it's we not have to keep a, that in it's mind. not like a fully functional league but it's still professional hockey they still get paid right they they're just, still paid players the the quality of the yeah. hockey is at a professional level it's the highest level in the land and people should view it as that. Right. You know, it's just because it's a different kind of hockey doesn't mean that it's yeah. lesser hockey. And the one thing it's just different. The one thing too, Alex, that I think that's the tough part is having teams go to barns is that they have to pay to rent out the facility because it's not like they own the team. Now right, that, and that's, that's and that's why, a, and that's a huge reason why and, having key name sponsors and different kind of stuff. And that's, that's why the okay. way the where the CWHL was at. The Furies, because with their partnership, they were kind of getting with the Toronto Maple Leafs and the same thing with Lake Canadian and the Calgary Inferno as well. They were getting to that point where they were going to be starting partnering with teams. Buffalo Buttes obviously did a lot with the Buffalo Sabres. Well, right. Because they, they were, well, at that point, they were owned by the, the Pajulas, the NWHL team. So there was a lot going forward with that. Obviously, it kind of got a little choppy with the CWHL fully, and now a pandemic hits, which Alex makes things a little bit tough financially. So it does. And I mean, and that then that was a huge reason why there was the argument where the NHL could step in and at the very at, at that at this when the CWHL folded. When, when, no, when, when when we were talking about the hashtag one league kind of thing. Yes. When that was that was a huge push when for I it, literally was, screamed on the show to curse the NWHL, but now I'm okay with it. <laughs> well, because you didn't you weren't hearing all the sides of the stories at the at the one point. I wanted one thing, and I wanted it, and I did the I did the typical Facebook comment person. This is how I want it. <laughs> I went. Th- yeah, you weren't I, you weren't willing I to hear that. everything about it. But no, that was that was the huge thing was that yes. for you know similar to the WNBA is that they can not necessarily mooch or it's just the being able to associate yourself with an established entity and then be able to you know share resources, share media, share even money, uh, sponsorship, promotion, just revenue, something that they can operate off of, which right. is it's just huge for a league such as this when you only have six teams. So even in a regular schedule where you have a regular, a regular, regular season, if you will, yes, you know, you're only going to be having maybe uh, a 24-game season, regular season because you only have six teams. So yeah. why, why would you try to have an 82-game season with only six teams? doesn't make sense at all. It's not, well, they, good, for, well, it's they, not good for ticket sales. Well, and, well, they sorry, don't, they don't my, have, sports, my sports marketing well, slash they don't sports have management games, brain. They, don't, they, don't, they never played 82 games. No, I'm... <sighs> they didn't play six, 82 games when they had the original six. No, I'm saying, why would you try to... Dummy. Oh my goodness! I'm just telling you what they. It was a do. it was a far fetched hypothetical that never exists. It was just me throwing it out there of why would they even? Re- it's like saying why would I run a hundred miles when I can't run two miles straight forward? Well, I mean I can, but it's a hypothetical. It's a joke. It's a yoke. Egg on with it. 
this coffee this coffee's empty, Alex. I need some help. Help, help. Well, you know, you know who doesn't need any help? Jake DeBrusque and Mikhail Sergachev, because they got contracts. That's so. a better segue, Alex. You're 0 for 2, or you're 1 for 3. Jake DeBrusque has signed a two-year, $3.675 million deal with Boston. This Ooh, is Cap Friendly's got ads now. Oh, of course they do. they got to pay for something somehow. Well, I was just, I clicked. I'm like, ah! Anyway, uh, so this is an extension on his current deal that I am looking up. No, nope, this is his new contract. This is his new contract. He signed so an extension to stay there, but he didn't sign it. It's This is his two-year deal that he's got coming up. Correct. Okay, so... With that being said, so this is his new contract, two years, $3.675 million. And he literally signed this contract to, hey, if I don't get paid this year, it's okay, I'll get paid more next year. Because his base salary this year is two and a half. Because, Alex, of a possible lockout, they may not get paid this year. So he said, I'll get the lower number for this year, and next year I'll make $4.85 million. And that's a smart uh, That's a smart signing. Well, no. His, so they have his AAV, but then there's what he actually gets paid. Right. That's how it works. Um, like, a guy can get paid $3 million a year for four years. That's $12 million. But he could literally get paid $1 million, $1 million, $1 million, $9 million. Well, I, I understand that. Well, you just confused me because I thought you were going on to the next guy, Mikhail Sergachev, who, who is signed 4.8. You're right. Who yes. signed his new deal, three years, $4.8 million. So you're, what you're saying, Tyler, is that he is $50,000 better in the second year of this contract, Jake DeBrus over Mikhail Sergachev. Yes! No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, the 22 year old has got that for three years. He's an RFA afterwards in 2023 24. So, the, literally the yeah, winner of the. For a little bit. The Duran Sergachev trade, I still as as good as Duran can be, Sergachev is what it's been expected, and this is why having him for three years at four point eight million dollars, it is not a high number, it is not a long contract. Now I'm sure, yes, I'm pretty sure Julian Breezewa is like, you're right, seven years for four point eight, sign it, but he's not going to do that because Sergachev, at least I'm sure his agent is not that dumb. So I like to see where both teams are going to be at. And we will we'll see how – I mean, Jake DeBrusque is that pesky kind of forward. He's tough. He's got skill. He may eventually jump up to the top four eventually. He may – or top six, excuse me. He may jump up to be a big-time forward. He, I don't think he's going to crack the Bergeron, Marsh, and Pasternak lineup, but that's okay. I'm sure he's okay with that. I like to think that, though, eventually he's going to become a guy that he's going to make more – than $4 million. That's why this is a contract, two years, 3.675. If he signs an extension after next season, there you go. If he, at the end of two years he's worth $5 million and the league is at a point where they can, you know, the money will, the cal- bleh, 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 bleh. the salary cap will start to go back up again. Great, perfect. That's what a lot of these contracts are all about. Now, going now to Mikhail Sergachev, Alex, I like this deal because you have a young defenseman who... I don't think his I don't think he's at his peak yet, Alex. I believe he's still young, still has some growing pains, but he's got a great group around him on the defense core. Guys like Hedman, you had Shattenkirk there last year, Bogosian, guys that were able to kind of show him, hey kid, here's how you do it, because those guys had been there, done that, and now he's going to kind of be pushed into a little bit of a more important role with those guys moving on. I like to think that he's going to maybe flourish in a more focused role in a more important role, jumping into that top four, maybe even being on the top pair. I don't know if he can play the right side. I think Hedman can, Alex. So you may see both of them maybe on a pair together at some point next season. But regardless, whenever they do play, I think Sergachev in these three years is going to show that he's worth $4.8 million. These are these are the epitome guys of a bridge contract without saying it's a bridge contract because a bridge contract is typically like one, one and a half. We'll call these, Alex, very expensive bridge contracts. You know, like that new bridge they're building over from Detroit to Windsor, the Gordie Howe Bridge? Yeah. yeah. Really expensive. However, it may work out in the end, and it may be worth a lot more than the contracts they signed for. So I like both deals, and, you know, it's been – I mean, Tampa, of course, they still have to look forward to signing Anthony Sorelli, which I'm hearing that they're – Getting there, they're making headway, but they're not a done deal yet. I'm hearing good things, but I haven't heard everything. Right now, he is the only guy left they really are going to want to focus on. So I think you have Eric Saranac, but that doesn't seem like it's going to be Chernak. Chernak? Chernak. I say Saranac. Chernak. Eric Chernak. It's not Saranac, Ty. It's not that weird place in between Lola and Ionia. Saranac? That guy, Eric. Saranac, Chernak, whatever. Chernak. 
and Anthony Sorelli, the only two guys left, both RFAs, but he's not, Chernak's not going to be a big guy. I like to think Sorelli's going to make a few dollars, but right now the Lightning only have $1.9 million. Or, sorry, no, they have no dollars in cap space. They have been using almost $2 million in LTIR, so which comes off the books thanks to the, uh, doesn't say who, but I presume, I think, no, because Callahan's contract. No, they have the Callahan contract, right? No, they traded that away. They traded it away. Where's the LTIR coming from here? The LTIR is coming from, from somebody else. From someone that doesn't exist. Somebody, I mean, somebody else is paying for it. Clearly. Well, because I think they still have the credit for it. They just don't have to pay for it. I mean, it's... Oh, okay, I'm just going to look up Ryan Callahan. Because I thought that contract was traded away. Was, wasn't it traded to Ottawa? Callahan? I... I'm, okay, I'm this not is, entirely sure. Let's go to transactions. Uh, but, but I mean, I yes, mean, you, you, he was traded to Ottawa in 2019 in the summer 2019 to get rid of the contract, so Ottawa can pay him the LTIR. Where is the LTIR coming from for Tampa? They get the credit for it. They get the credit. Doesn't make a dang lick of sense. It makes perfect sense because they don't have to pay the. It's like someone else paying your loan for you, but you still get the credit. It's like if someone pays off your credit card bill, but you get the the credit points for paying off your credit card bill. That's just cheating. <laughs> Legal. Uh, you know what? I do want to be in these new CBA negotiations of 2026, Alex. Hopefully I'm in better standing with the league at this point and not playing. Hey, this. Tyler, I'm just saying. This is why I like looking at this stuff and learning this stuff, because now I know all the loopholes. Six years from now, the Lou loopholes. The, the Lou loopholes. Lou's loopholes. Lou's lo- Oh, my gosh. Lou's- I have a... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go with this. Let me go with this. Lose loopholes for taking care of problems such as loophole when he was trying to figure out lose loopholes for loophole. Boom! Can you write that out for the fr- for the fans at home? Sure. Not now, obviously, because I don't know if I can do that on the on the on the stream because that, that that's a lot of stuff, Alex. Well, you see, you go to put 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 get it put boom. Trying to do your John Madden impression? Yes. Oh, um. Yeah. But anyway, so but let's yes. move on here. Uh, COVID hockey. Um, we're talking about Hockey Canada right now. They have paused their junior camp for two weeks. Well, I believe it's got one week left, but they paused it for two weeks, so which has a week yeah, left. Yeah, it's, it's it. more like a week and a week and change. But So two players tested positive for COVID-19, um, and I'm reading a Mark Masters uh, article is where I'm getting this. This is a... Mark Masters, good guy. This is an interview um, with... Uh, Lethbridge uh, Center Dylan Cousins, who one time follower of the Kula Show before he realized what we were tweeting because of him. Right. Uh, <laughs> Alex just said right because so, he has no idea what it was. No, I remember because I was there and I was like, D- "Dude, what are you doing?" <laughs> Here, Dylan. Here's how to show you how to get mad at somebody. Uh, Pow, right so after legs. the two pl- players that were tested positive for COVID nineteen um, early in the week, the other forty four players as well as coaches and staff were deemed close contacts and subject subject to the mandatory fourteen day quarantine per. Um, Alberta Health Services, um, their order, um, with from what I'm reading, it was it was just disappointment. Um, a lot of people were pissed off, um, just because all the hard work that they were putting in over the course of the last nine months, um, taking two weeks off is a huge detriment to the um, to the players and you know Hockey Canada, and just having to take that time off is a real huge part of. Um, I mean. Two weeks in the world in the in the world of world juniors is something that is really it's a do or die yeah. kind of thing, especially when like Team USA they just released released their tentative uh, roster right. um, just recently. So and this the, this the is thing, a huge thing. The thing um, is too is and this is by the way in Red Deer, yes, Red River. The the camp the camp is in Red Deer. Red River tournament's going to be in Red River, Alberta. December and January in Edmonton. Now the big thing with this, Alex, is the fact that there has been a lot of people that have criticized Hockey Canada for having their selection camp so early and for so long, too. Because a lot of people don't forget, Alex, this is a tournament, and there's going to be a camp that typically takes place in the summer. Well, guess what? You couldn't really do it in the summer, Alex. Because, well, COVID. It's, and it's still here. Well, right. But, and But hold on. Okay. So now that's why they have it now. And they had, I think they only had about a, three games left, I believe, to for selection camp purposes. And, you know, because the U.S. camp is not going to be as long. Obviously, they're going to have a lot more kids coming out of out of both major, well, team kids that were going to play major junior and kids that are playing collegially right now. 
and they're going to do extensive testing to get them to come to camp in the first place. So there's a lot to go with the U.S. camp, but having Canada do it early because they wanted to get it done so they can, I guess, rest a little bit before they actually go to the tournament. Because, Alex, and this is another theory I have with this, the why it's so early, a lot of these kids, Dylan Cousins and a lot of guys that come from, you know, Shane Wright may be a guy that could play. These guys are not playing right now. Whereas Dylan Holloway, who plays for Wisconsin, because Tony Granato went, you know, off the wall about the fact that he ha- he has to lose one of his best players because of this camp. They want to make sure that the their junior kids are ready to go. That's why a guy like Kirby Doc, who yes plays for the Blackhawks, but he's allowed to go play there. They want to make sure he's up to par because this is not going to be, hey guys, let's get uh, get together the week before, practice a little bit, go play. This is not the Olympics. They want to win, so that's why they're having a, this camp so early. Now, granted, yes. Could well, I mean, have... you also have to take into fact that if they have the camp early, then stuff like this, they can take extra time. Correct. They have extra time that they don't have to make up on. It's not like when, when you have a, you know, a, even a month-long camp or a three-week camp or whatever, yeah. and then if you have to lose a week or two due to quarantine and you have, after that, only a week until the games. Yeah. Because at this point they're gonna be all out of get, luck. They're gonna be together until the tournament. At this point, given the fact that the tournament starts in less than a month, well, Bas- basically, because I mean, the, there's gonna be the two week quarantine, and then they'll probably take another week of practicing, playing together, all that good stuff, making yeah. sure that everyone's safe and healthy. And since the you know OHL is not gonna start until February, the a WHL is supposed to start after the World Junior Tournament. Quebec League's still trying to play. I don't know how they're doing it, but they're trying. But so that's why I get it from like the if you're a college coach's perspective, but all the other kids that have that are not playing because their season hasn't started yet, I get why it's so early. And it's a good thing now that they're taking the precautions, everyone's quarantining. And I'm pretty sure that the message can be sent to these players like, hey guys, you wanna play? Don't do something stupid. Because there's gonna be extensive testing among all the teams that are gonna be going into Edmonton there. Because it's gonna be a bubble. So you're going to have any issues you're going to have with positive cases, get them out of the way now. They want the players to get together so they can start quarantining now. So when they transport them, there's very little chance they can get COVID on their way up to Edmonton. Right. So it'll be, it's an interesting, this is a very weird tournament. It's going to be a very odd tournament. There is a great chance, Alex, that somehow, some way, one team can't play. There may, that we are looking at that possibility. And it could be Canada. Could be the U.S. Could be Austria. Could be Sweden. Could be any team. Any team could get a test right before the day of the tournament and say, "See you guys," because two week quarantine, Alex. That's the tournament. Right. There is a yeah, great and, chance that and may I happen. Mean, and well, and I mean another thing too is that with that in mind, a huge thing is going to be any sort of controversy that comes with it. So if it, if 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 it is one of the big four, the big five, you know, Canada, U.S., uh, Sweden, Russia, Finland. If it's one of those five teams that, you know, they can't compete just because they they had players that tested positive, then it's going to be a whole different controversy of, well, did they actually... Because if it's not Team Canada, do you think that, like, you know, the the Russian hockey machine that never breaks, they you think, oh, my goodness, those darn Canadians, they didn't want to lose to us, so now they, te- they made us test pot. No, I'm, no. Just jo- I'm just joking. I'm They're, just joking. But well, because Alex, it, don't forget, the double IHF is the one that's going to be controlling this. Yes, Hockey Canada is hosting the event, but double IHF is going to have their hand in the testing. Well, they're going to have their hand in the testing, but they also have the IHF. Double IHF. Double IHF. I don't know what IHF stands for. International Hockey Federation. Which hockey? There's more than one hockey in this world, Alex. There's field hockey. There's ball hockey tournaments. There actually is national ball. There's floor ball, which is not technically hockey, but it's pretty much hockey. There's ice hockey. Do you want me to go full Bubba Shrimp we're on not, you? We're not doing this right now. Um, but you I got mean, shrimp scampi, yeah, you got shrimp yes, set. the double IHF ha- can ha- have their quote unquote hands in the testing, but they don't. They're not allowed to because who they, has? They oversee it. No, they don't oversee it. They can say. All, all they can do is request testing materials. They can't oversee it because it's ran by the Albertan Health uh, Commission. You know the they, I just had it up. The Wait, are we certain on this? I'm just the da, 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 the Alberta Health Services because well, that's, no, that's the mandatory 14 day quarantine. I just want to know if like who is running the test. Like obviously it's gonna be medical health it's professionals the Canadian in government. Canada. The Canadian government is running the tests. They they are the over. Where you're really gonna try to start doing the conspiracy theories now? No, it's not even. It's not conspiracy theories that 
with everything, the host country, their government has their they have to be the overarching figure. The IOC is not going to run medical tests because they don't have a medical branch of the IOC. We're, we're they, jumping to the Olympics now, right? We're, well, the IOC, the double IHF, the double IHF is under the IOC. But this has nothing to do with the IOC. This tournament does not. I mean, no, it no, no it, yeah, they don't yeah. have any relation to it. I mean, other than the fact that the IWHF is a member of the IOC. Yes, but this tournament is just the double IHF. Well, yeah, but what I'm trying to get there is the double IHF has no true authority on other than saying that if this player tests positive, positive, they cannot compete in our tournament. That's all they have as far as authority goes. Right, exactly. They, they can't run the tests. They can't hire and hire and bring in their own medical professionals for this. Are we sure about that? They have to go under local law. That's what. That's how the rules are. That's how everything goes. I'm just want to make sure we're not. Uh, you're not saying something that you get. Your, I'm going to keep out of this one. I'm not. I'm not getting in trouble because that's how it is. I mean, if. If there's the 10 people that watch this, Alex, and the 40 people that listen to it will tell you that you're wrong. Tyler, if a, if a player gets injured, breaks his leg, yes. does he go to the I, double IHF hospital? No. No. No, he, but... He goes to the local hospital that is under Albertan law, which is under Canadian law. Boom, roasted! But that's who the injury... I'm talking about the testing. It's like the NHL had... Yes, the NHL had to obey what the laws were in Canada when they were staying there for the bubbles, yes, but... Who ran the testing? Who was in charge of the testing? The NHL. That's what I'm saying. They may follow the Canadian law, the local law, but the double IHF is the one overseeing the testing. I would believe. I would believe that's how it would work. Because, Alex, then, like you said, if it's just the Canadian government there, then yes, the conspiracy theories are going to go. So that's why you need to have the double IHF there controlling how, how the testing goes how, where the results come from, who is posting the results. Oh, yes, you may have people that work within the Canadian health system there testing these players. I get that. But you're going to have someone there from the IIHF overseeing it. They may not do the testing directly themselves, but they'll be monitoring it and making sure that it's a clean test and all that stuff. That's what I'm saying. Health Canada. Sold. Good Lord. How does this affect the Leafs, Alex? No, well, right. it affects the Leafs by the all-Canadian uh, division. division going up in smoke and having to play in Tampa. What? <laughs> no, that's the <laughs> Raptors. Because the Raptors. That's why uh, yes, I said the Raptors. the Raptors. What does that have to do with tea in China? I wonder how the Raptors... Are they going to play in Emily, you think? The Ra- I don't care. What's the- Is there a local college down in Tampa? Like a small one? Tampa Bay there's State. A, there's or, a lot or, of or, colleges in Florida. Or Florida St- or University of Florida, Tampa Bay. Something like that. Some really dumb small D3 school down there they could play their games at. I don't know. Anyways. I, but I, Sorry. Going back to hockey here. So, why? No, I wanted to bring this up because, A, you know, it's a good thing to talk about. Why does the NH, Why does this mean for the NHL? Because we're, lear- we're seeing. Are we talking about the, the. Are you talking about like the having the camp so early, like a training camp? No. Or are you talking about, like... Well, the thing testing. is, is that if a team tests positive, because we've seen in the National Football League, a team tests positive one week, they can play the next. If the law in is in Canada that you have to sit for two weeks, and because if they, if they do... Because I mean, we talked about it before, Alex, previously in previous episodes here of TKS, there may be a possibility to have a bubble to start the season for each division. The Canadian division, the East, Central, and West division. However the heck you want to call it. Atlantic, Pacific, whatever. The regional divisions, they may start the regular season in a bubble. That's a, that is a possibility, and there have been discussions on it. So, yes, in that case, you do all the testing beforehand. They all go into the bubble. They all sit there. They do nothing. Because, obviously, you know, by the time the season starts up, it'll be after the junior tournament. So, you could do it in Edmonton. You could do it in Toronto because you've seen it work there. But what I'm saying is... Just keep talking. Are yeah, we trying to figure out Just where they'd talking. be? Just keep talking. So... The NHL may have to do that. That may be a realistic possibility because, as we've seen, if you travel around, you can easily get stuff here. We've seen it, obviously, with the World Junior Team in Canada. We see it all. We saw it all the time last year in Major League Baseball, the NFL, college football. Ohio State, Alex, is one missed game away from not being eligible for postseason play. So that is that is obviously prevalent, especially in Canada, because down here in the States, it's, 
oh, yeah, you test positive. Okay, just sit out the week. The rest of the team can play as long as there's no tracing involved. Let the rest of the team play. Well, at least, pardon me, that's at least what Clemson did, and the SEC does that, but that's the South. In the Big Ten, Ohio State's had to miss a couple of games, Maryland's missed games, what have you. So what this has to do with the NHL is if, say, Toronto is having to travel to Edmonton, but, oh, crud, one of the players gets test positive for COVID. That means the Leafs have to sit out two weeks of their season. And this is why it's going to be tough because instead of having, because it's not just, this is not the NFL, Alex. It's not college football. You miss one game. In a two-week span, that's easily four, possibly five games that they're missing, which is a lot more difficult to reschedule than one football game, which is why I can't wait for talking about the Rando coming up after this here on TKS because Alex, he's got a lot to talk about the Baltimore Ravens testing positive again because that game against the Steelers that was supposed to be played tomorrow, which is supposed to be played on Thanksgiving, is canceled and postponed again. Anyways, this is an issue because now you're looking at teams having to miss more than one game because of a positive test. I don't see this league playing a X amount of season, a 60-game season, whatever, how many, 50-game season, outside of a bubble in their respective division. I don't see it. It's so difficult right now because the numbers are so incredibly high. Okay, as long as you know that you're writing this on the, the drive, Alex, I just want you to know that, okay? Yeah. But anyways, Alex is drawing up a diagram right now. He's not going to post it here. It looks like John Mann doesn't look pretty. But I don't see how it's possible for the teams to try to do it safely and under the current local guidelines of Canada and the United States to allow teams to miss two weeks and just, I mean, you're going to have to go, Alex. If you're going to try to risk it by having teams travel amongst their division, you're going to risk COVID tests and positive COVID cases, I mean, and you're just going to have to accept the fact that you're going to end the regular season and the standings are going to be based on point percentage. That's what's going to have to happen here, guys. You can't base it on points, obviously, because some teams may play 50 games. Some teams may play 45 games. It's going to be based on point percentage. Now, obviously, the league may set a minimum number of games played, like college football, like the NFL. But you're going to have to find a way to play within COVID, if at all. Because, Alex, now the rumor's starting to go around that there is a possibility of not playing. There is a con- there's conversations going on. What would happen if the league didn't play? Now, I will, let's go to your graphic because I got a lot to say, about, and there's a lot of talk on why the league needs to play this year. What's with the graphic, Alex? It looks like a wave. Okay, so the graphic, and for those of you that are watching live show or the replay, um, you, you're we're watching not gonna, me, We're not, we're not going sh- to show it. doing we're, all the hand signals or whatever. We're not showing it because it looks it looks like an awful-looking Viking ship that's well, outside right. the sea. Yeah, you're fine. But no, I was doing little hand things. Fine! Trying to figure- Find the four year word done with F. Yeah. Oh, so it's free. And this knowledge is free for all of our listeners. And it looks like a fool drew it. I just forgot other words. Are, so basically, what this drawing that I have is me trying to figure out okay, what would happen if the NHL stuck with a bubble system and had all of their teams in four different bubbles and having bubble teams from each bubble travel to other bubbles. So, bubble, 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 bubble. bubble hockey to the max. So you not, have not the cool bubble hockey we used to do when we were kids. No. So what what would essentially happen is you'd have your bubble teams. So let's let's, say, let's just stick with. Well, you remember that these teams would stay in their division, right? So you'd have they wouldn't travel. So to bubble to bubble. You'd have four, hold on. You'd have four divisions, right? So yes. you'd have four different bubbles. You'd Canada, have the, East, Central, West. Canada, East, Central, West. So let's say with the Eastern, because we're, you know, kind of Eastern hockey people, let's say that the Eastern bubble, they play in their bubble, okay? After all those teams play each other for however many games in their bubble, those teams go to the Central bubble, which those Central teams already played against themselves. So then the East teams and the Central teams in a bubble would play each other, okay? They wouldn't. What? Hold the on. East bubble Why teams, would they travel, Alex? To play the other teams, they're not gonna. That's not. That's not gonna happen in this. They case. could. No, they're. That's. That's why it's an all Canadian division. So no, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out, Ty. Alex is doing exactly what the NHL is not going to do. I'm saying it's a possibility. If you want to keep people safe and you want to keep people playing in a bubble, but you also want them to play all the other teams in just their division, this is how you're gonna have to do it. Is you're gonna have to keep teams in sections of quarantine. And then from there, you take all the teams at one time 
and move them to a different bubble and to play the teams from that bubble. So then you'd have two different divisions of bubbles playing in one specific place. That's the best way you're going to do it. So then for Canada, they would have to play all their divisional games in Canada, and then they would have to finish the remainder of their season in the United States going from bubble to bubble to bubble. And then obviously you'd have probably a week or two of quarantine in between those games. So if you wanted to have a mass produce or a mass amount of games other than just each division playing each other and going based on points average or whatever, however you want to put it, that's how you're going to do it. I just figured it out, and even though people may not like it, that's the only way that's safe. Well, they're not going to play. Boom, tonight. roasted. They're going to do what the MLB baseball did and stay within their region. So there's a great possibility that the Canadian division, Alex, Vancouver. You, you can Edmund, keep that one right there for proof. on the. Yeah, document. I'll keep it there. I'm not going to look at it because it just, it, I don't know. What you may is. not like it, but, but it would work. It could work, but that's not what they're going to do. There's a possibility that each team may play each other until the second round of the playoffs. They may not play because it may be the Canadian division and the East division versus, and then the central will play the Pacific division. They may not play each other. The winner of those divisions they might play until the conference finals. And then you may have the Stanley cup champions go get, or the conference finals, whatever, how you want to do the conference championship. They'd play each other. I'm saying this. Well, you better hope that you're not trying to sell tickets. No, they're not going to. I don't, I don't see a feasible way in any part of the country, including you, Dallas, Oh, did you see Sioux Falls, how they just allow fans in the building like crazy? Yeah, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They're doing a great job over there. Let me tell you, or North Dakota, whatever the heck it is. Peyton Turner showed me a highlight, and it's just like a full barn. It's great. It's great, Alex. I'm never going to call a game ever again at this rate. I'm just saying. <laughs> Holy cats. Anyways, I don't understand how you, if you, unless, hey, if the vaccine gets them out there, everyone's going to be saved, right? Listen, guys, how long did it take us to get over the influenza, Alex? The Great Depression happened, and the people weren't getting over the influenza. But we have better technology. I get that. But I'm saying is by the time the NHL may start this season, we're not going to be 100% safe. It's not going to be 100% safe to go out. And That's crack. why I'm saying you can do this. Right. Use the bubble system, but... Do it on a bigger level. Don't just have two separate bubbles. You can do it like this. I'm saying it. I'm you, saying, can, you can stay safe because through the system, yep. you are staying safe. Yes, it's going to be longer, so it's going to be harder on the players to be isolated away from their families, all that stuff. Yes, I understand that. But if you want to play a number of games where it's not just your divisional rivals and you have a bunch of people having the punch out and Ipsilan or Pipsilani or paper, 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 every single night because they're like, all right, I've already played you 15 times. Here's a hockey stick. <gasps> you mean you're I'm talking, tired of you. Are you talking about the old school days? Try to play a Vander Kane 15 times in the matter of three months. Well, no, hold on, Alex. So there'd be seven teams in Canada, which means there would be 26 teams. Seven teams no. in... Hold on, hold on. Se yeah, seven teams so, in Canada, at least two games per opponent. That's 14 oh, games. Seven. So you spread that over... 24 teams. So you have eight teams in each division in the United States. So that's seven games. So say you want to play 50 games. I think they'd want... Well, actually, no. Magic number's 46. You mean 48? No, 46. Well, I'm trying to... Because here's the thing. Say you said... Because 56 would be a great number. Because... 56 could be a great number. Half of 82 is what time? Actually, no, four, well, actually it's 36. 42 would be better. Because now I'm just thinking 42. Because you'd play the seven teams in the United States six times. In Canada, you'd play the other six teams seven times. So 42 would be a great number. 42! Le little over half of the season, which is literally one more than half of a normal regular season. Because at this point, by the time you start the season, you're going to be looking at halfway through the calendar season of what it would be in the National Hockey League. So, yes, if you're going to do it this way, if you're going to do the division, the regional separation, you're going to have to do it this way. It's the only way I think they can do it because right now, yes, they're looking at the money problems right now, and that is the big issue, and it's going to be the biggest issue until they figure this thing out. 46 is better because of the odd number, by the way. 46 would not be a bad number. Obviously, Continue. But I want to know, because there are Alex, now we're looking at the possibility of having a lockout. Not, not necessarily a lockout, just not playing. Because... The players can't agree on a number. Players well, it, would be, it would be a lockout because it would you're be... You're right. The, lot te the owners would lock out the teams. But anyways, yeah. and I not don't a, know... Not a, not, a, not a work strike. And so, and I don't know... And We talked about this a little bit last week, Alex. We don't know who we'd point the finger at this time because, yes, I understand the players because 
the CBA was already signed off on. But I understand the league because the league wants to save money. The league needs money in order to operate next season. So if they can't figure it out, they're in trouble. Why, did your, did your thing disconnect or something? Yeah, it did oh, for okay. a second. You're good. You're good. But anyways, I we are looking at that possibility. But the problem is, and the word I keep hearing from my insiders, is the fact that if the league doesn't play, it's not necessarily a awful you know loss of money with TV deals and all that crud. Because don't forget, this is NBC's last year, Alex. This is this is NBC's last season under the current agreement. And I hope it is their last season because mother of God, you lost Doc Emmer. Just keep going. Keep but, going. It would look so bad that the NHL doesn't play, especially since the NBA is coming back this month. NFL moved on as scheduled. And Major League Baseball was able to pull it off. Alex, we may be looking at minor league baseball coming back next season. Hey, how about that? Wouldn't that be nice? Fans or no fans. But if the National Hockey League can't go on because of not being able to agree on a dollar figure, it will make the league look Almost as bad. I'm not going to say as bad as 0405 because that thing was a whole dumpster fire and a half. This is only a dumpster fire. It would make them look bad because it shows that they were not able to agree on something. Now, yes, economics work differently in each league. I understand that, guys. But the MLS, Alex, is able to move forward. Major League Soccer, which is not even the big four. It is the fifth. It is the stepchild that may or may not get invited to Christmas. The MLS is competing and doing everything right now is because they need to to survive. If right. they, they want to still even be relevant in right. this conversation. And that's why I'm saying they're able to do it. And that is probably the... They're also outdoors. They're, yes, I get that. They are outdoors. I agree with you there. And you're able to... And they also had only one Canadian... I mean, technically three Canadian teams that they had to move down. Yes, but, and I understand that. So, But I'm saying is they were able to move forward with it. And that is the... Least financially stable, I don't say least financially stable, but that's the, out of all the leagues, it's the, probably the, the lowest on the totem pole of money made. Yeah. The, most, the least profitable. There we go. Is that a good, you think that's a good way to put it? Sure. Okay. For the sake of time. Yes. They're able to move on. If the NHL can't do it, it's a bad look on the league. And I understand, yes, safety is a concern. Money is a concern. But they need to be able to play if everyone else is going to play. That's the problem we're looking at right now. It, yes, I want the I want the players to be paid what they're owed to the closest dog they can. But I understand it for the league to go on and not be in financial dire straits as they were coming out of the lockout in 2005. They need to be able to make to have some money left over so they can move on from there. I understand both sides in this, Alex. When I was a kid, I didn't understand it. I thought the owners were the devils and only Mike Gillich because Mike Gillich made pizza for all of us. That was the only reason why he was okay. Everyone else could have gone to hell back in those days. Kind of like how for until maybe about a couple months ago you thought Batman was the devil? Batman did amazing things, and that's why I don't want to hate him again. Because <laughs> There's I'm no like, reason to hate him. Well, cut. No, you, no, no, you, no, you, you, see, you see both sides, and in both a, sides are... And it's, I mean, it's really, in this case, it's three sides. It's a three-sided die. You have the one side of the league. The league needs to operate on its own budget. They have and to... And be profitable, so at least close and to, to be And to be relatively, at this point, if they can break even, that's a win. Let's say, in this example, they need enough money to break even. Or maybe a little under. Just a little bit under. Break, for, the sake of our, for the sake of time and everything, let's say break even. Okay. They need everything to break even. Okay. Fiscally, for all investors, all parties involved, they need to break even. Second side? Second side of the die is the owners. They themselves, since they're the ones that are paying the players, they need to be able... Except for Arizona. Okay. Well, it's the team... <laughs> Anyways, yes. The go, team is Go pay- on, go on, go on. The teams need to pay their players. They need to pay their staff. They need to take care of all of the arena stuff. So they have their own problems when it comes to money. That's the those those two. And then there's the third one. The third side of the die, which is the players. Slash players union, because I, I put them all together. Well, players are a part of the players union now. Well, no, <laughs> well the teams are part of the league ties. So why aren't they the teams in the league at the I think I think care. I think care. No, the the other side of the die is the players. Yes. So obviously they don't want to pay 
more than they have to as far as escrow. They don't want to pay the league to play. They don't want to lose as much money. They don't at this wanna, point, they're getting money taken away from them, but yes. They're not having money taken away from them. They're just having money held off until future dates. Right. They're not. They're, yeah, exactly. The money is not just disappearing for these players. It's just going to be paid off later. Yes. The way I see it, and I'm I'm not trying to s- try to put any blame on one particular party because, like you said, I also see all three sides of this. The NHL, it's a now. Do or die now. They can survive later, but if they want to stay relevant, do or die now. Yep. The teams, to be able to operate and survive, it's do or die now. The players have a lot more leeway. If you think about it, who do they really have to pay? They have one person they really have to pay, which is the big one, is their agent. Yeah, Agents they have to pay, sure, if they have their own personal trainer and that kind of stuff, they have to pay for that kind of stuff. But the big one that they have is their is their agent. Which yeah, that can be a bit of change yep. when it comes to it. But even if you're making, you know, seven hundred grand and you pay fifteen percent to your agent, you still have quite a little bit of change left in the bank for your family and you know taking care of all that kind of stuff. Yep. The players and the players union have the least to lose if there's a lockout. They have the least to lose if they decide to play and have their money held off for a little bit so that the teams and the league can operate. Exactly. I'm not putting the pressure on the players, but I feel like this is going to be a scenario where if the players don't cave, we're going to have a bigger problem. Right. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not trying to put any blame on them. I'm not trying to put that, that evil on them, but I'm just, I feel like in this scenario currently, with all the information that's been presented, they have a they have less to lose. Yeah. Because if in this case, they quite literally have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose if they take less money this year. Because it's they're not taking less money in general. They're just not having a portion of their money paid to them this year. And you have to think the money that they're not being paid, they also don't have to pay to their agent right. because they only have to pay the 15% or 20% or 30% of what they get in. So they don't have to pay, you know, 15% or 30% on 700,000 when they only have 50,000 come in or 500,000 come in. They only have to pay 15 or 30% on 500,000. That's my whole spiel on it. I thought about this, as you can tell. Yes. And I'm not stupid. I have my thoughts. Well, yes, Alex. But Penny stupid, for your but, thoughts. But stupid people have thoughts too. I'm not saying your thoughts were stupid. There, I'm just implying that you know there there are stupid people that have thoughts. Stupid. I didn't say you. Did I say he was stupid? Can no, I said peace. I said stupid people have thoughts. Can we go to commercial now? That hurt my feelings. <laughs> you do you want to go to commercial because your, your feelings have been hurt? I want a commercial. You want a commercial? Commercial. We'll go to commercial, folks. When we come back, I'm gonna start crying. Because uh, other things. <laughs> this is the Keel Show here on 12 Ounce Sports.
Drink Aid, ready for distribution worldwide. <laughs> And we're back from commercial break. I'm the dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Keel. Alongside me, the jerk to the jerks. <laughs> Tyler Keel. Give me that carrot. Where's that hurricane sweater if I'm going to be the jerk to the jerks? I, you, that's why I said it. That's why you said it? Yeah. You're the one wearing the jerk shirt here, Alex. No. Jerks. No, I. We got to have half hour left. Man, that coffee came down hard, man. Really? I, My Red Bull is still kicking strong. Well, cause you had look at this thing, guys. Sixteen fluid ounces of hell yeah, brother. <laughs> of hell, yeah. hey, of hell yeah, brother. Sugar free, sugar. Oh, it's so it's healthy, is what you're saying. Lightly carbonated. Oh, Lord. it's it's basically, it's pet. It's it's just electric. The day that someone proposed that this show it's must be sponsored, mineral, mineral water. Listen, Alex. The day that this show is sponsored by an energy drink is the day that I'm no longer a part of it. Red Bull. <laughs> Shout out Red Bull. Sponsor us. Shout out Adidas. I'm already sponsored by you, but sponsor the show. Okay, well, Adidas is fine because Adidas, you know, they got Second String Leather Company. <laughs> there and there. I lo- no, actually, well, it's funny. Can Zach, I just get a Zach, wallet? Zach Smith <laughs> seriously asked, he's like, hey, you should probably not have the reindeer covering the logo. I'm like, well, that's a good point. Well, yeah, you got to show the stuff. Yeah. I mean, even though we already had them on the. Uh, on the prompter there on our graphic. And then and also you're, you're actually wearing, wearing the, the shirt. shirt. And I am wearing the shirt because now it's a habitable temperature. It's a habitable temperature. Yes, because it gets warm in here when I do the show. And I totally didn't realize I don't have the, the front light on. Because I don't think the light looks bad in here. I totally forgot that I turned that, didn't turn that light on. Eh, I mean, it, it looks fine. I it's, mean, it's not really, mu- it's a slightly darker, but it's not too bad. Yeah. Well, it, it helps that it's dark at the time we start the show now outside. It really helps with that. Right. Uh, I'll check remember that next time. I don't like having the light beaming on us before the show because it gets very bright. That's what I think makes it really hot in here is when we're, like, getting steamed on by the – it's not an LED light. That's a uh, – what are those lights called? Fluorescent. The fluorescent lights. There we go. Beaming on you, making you sweat here on the Kilo Show on 12 Ounce Sports. Yeah, 12 Ounce Sports on Zingo TV. Check Brought to you by MyBookie.eg and – Second Street Leather Company. Let's get into the logo. Let's but the, logo. the final part that we will talk about today, the final segment, is something that we sent out a poll on Twitter for. The Twitter poll was with the news of hashtag Skydome, a.k.a. the Rogers Center. Rogers Center in Toronto, the home of the Toronto Blue Jays. And former home well, of the Toronto Argonauts. And uh, was that it? I think I th- that was it. Yeah. Well, TFC played a couple games there because they had to play there like in March when it was too cold and snowy. Right. Um, but anyways. But the Sky Dome, Rogers Center, whatever you want to call it, is coming down in the near future. What hashtag NHL arenas would you like to see replaced? We sent out this poll um, with this reason that the NYBC Live is not Nassau. on the... Nassau. Nassau. That, yeah. That's the proper Twitter handle for Nassau Coliseum. The reason why it's not involved is because the Islanders are going to be moving there. They're going to get their own rink soon. Right, because um, so, right now Nassau is the oldest, no, old, second oldest arena in the league. Right, Madison and Square Garden is the there oldest. were quite a few votes, actually. Um, the top four options were the B, B, and T Center. Did you want uh, me to read it Florida, off? No, I got it. <laughs> uh, the Saddle Dome in Calgary, the Prudential Center in New Jersey, and other with the comments below. Tyler, was there a couple that were down there in so, the comments? So let's kind of, well, yeah. So minor league Grando, which is coming up here in less than half an hour on 12 ounce sports. He said, not I'm surprised people don't talk about Bridgestone because it's going to turn 30 in this decade. And you know, there was a facelift. He want, he's interested to see what's going to happen in the future. And I, the reason why I put, cause good guy, uh, well, I'm gonna say good guy. Uh, maybe is at DJ underscore Ty Tyson 98. His name is Ty Tyson. He said, why are people having issues with Prudential Center? And what I commented was, location, location, location. Newark is not a good place to have anything. I'm not talking about team. I'm not talking about a hockey team, Alex. I'm talking about anything. We've gone over it on the show before. We've bashed Newark before. And I will do it again. Because it's not a great town to have a, for a team in. 
Yes, there is Kanata, Ontario, which is where Ottawa is, and which we've we've already. Which is given hilarious because you go on. I mean, Alex, right now he has the list of the arenas up on Wikipedia. I know it's Wikipedia is bad, but he's just Wikipedia looking for the isn't bad. But it okay. does say Ottawa on there, which is incorrect. But regardless, and yes, there are weird spots for other arenas. Obviously, BB and T Center not in Miami. It's in Sunrise, which is literally you can see it from the highway, and there's just nothing. There's a park. Yeah, that's why they're the Florida Panthers and not. Well, they were they weren't even the when they, when they were in Miami Arena back in the day. They were still Florida. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They don't have to be in Miami, right? The Miami Panthers. Eh. It's not like Arizona. It's like they went from like or the, Ottawa. We've got to become the Miami Marlins. We got to represent the city, dog. No, listen, no one cares about you. No one still doesn't care about you. Your uncle Stan he didn't care about you. Your own owner doesn't care about you. Anyway, sorry, baseball, hockey. I mean, Dallas owner doesn't care about his players, but yeah. well, <sighs> Jerry Jones, hockey. So. The reason why I put BB&T, and so I said Prudential Center, BB&T because nothing, and Saddle Dome because that's been the NHL's target for a long time, or at least for people talking about why it needs to move on. Well, as of right now... Because it was uh, the Olympics, Saddle Dome was the rich because it was built for the 88 Olympics. True. Uh, the quick fun fact, I'm going to exclude a, a kind of a honorary is going to be Nassau Coliseum because even though it was originally erected in... 1972, um, in 2018-19, they had the renovation. Other than Nassau Coliseum, there are only 10 buildings in the NHL that were built or finished in the year 2000 or later. There are only, only 10. 10. Okay. Only 10. So Because like the American, the Amer- Scotia Bank was down in the late 90s because the Raptors moved in there first. Right, so I'm going to go down the list. American Airlines Center was in 2001. The Bell MTS place in Winnipeg was in 2004, so that was the original home of the Manitoba Moose. No, no, yes. it wasn't. Wasn't it? No, they played at where the, where the Jets played. Um, can't think of what it's called now. Um, Cops Coliseum. That's what they played, where the, where the Jets used to play. I thought they played there. Anywho. No, the, the Manitoba Moose, Alex, they were in the 90s, remember? No, I thought that's where, I thought they played at Bell MTS place. They did, yes. That, that wasn't their original home, though. The original home was in... In Winnipeg, but then they moved to build MTS place in two thousand four. Yes, they did move there. But that yes, that was the first tenant. Alex. That's, that's that's what I, that's what I meant to say. Gotcha. You made it incredibly. Just yeah, I didn't get it. Anywho, uh, so Gila River Arena in Glendale, home of the Arizona worst, Coyotes. We talk about bad location. Listen, guys, I know there's stuff in Glendale, but there's not too much. No, that was well, uh, that, that was a dumb decision. That was in two thousand three. Uh, Little Seas Arena for Detroit, 2017. Which is legitimately in the middle. Yep, of Detroit. That, like, that is the most recent one. Um, God, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, 2000 Nationwide Arena, a home of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, 2010 PPG Paints Arena for Pittsburgh. To go over a old Mellon Arena. Uh, the Prudential Center in New Jersey, <laughs> which it is one of the newer ones. It was only erected in 2007. But However, Mother we, of it, God. It's just a matter of location. 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 So I, I don't think that they're going to move anytime soon. I just want to complain it's, about it's it. It's been so Can I, just I know. complain about it, though? Uh, 2016 was Rogers Place for the Oilers. Uh 2016 was when T-Mobile Arena was erected for the Golden Knights down there in Paradise, Nevada, not Vegas. It's over there. It's, it's cl- basically It's Vegas. close enough where it's not like, it's not Newark. It's not Glendale. It's there. You l- They have shuttles, like not long shuttle buses there. Right. Um, and the last one is finally built in 2000 in St. Paul, Minnesota, the Excel Energy Center. Home of the Wild and the Minnesota State Hockey Championships. Yeah, I just want to make sure that. that I didn't miss any. I mean, there were a couple, like, I know, like you said, Scotiabank was 99. I think a couple, what was, what was that, 96? Bell Center was in 96. Or, excuse me, the Molson Center was called when it was first built. Bridgestone was 96. Yep. Uh, Enterprise Center was 94. Yeah, there's there's a lot that were in the late '90s. There's only a few that stick out, like the older ones. Oh, so yeah, obviously, Nassau, Madison Square Garden, 1968, just because it's an old old building. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot of, except for the few exceptions, they've existed for most of them have existed within 30 years. Yes. So the now what we're asking, or what we're going to talk about, is of those. 
who needs a renovation or who needs to move. So Madison Square Garden, I'm laying down the gauntlet early. It is a beautiful I'm, building. I'm not involved it in the show. It is a historical I'm landmark. I'm not involved with this at all. However, I'm hiding myself. Think about it. No. Think about it with me real quick. No. Where are you going to put No. Alex, where are you going to put them? You're going to tear it down. No, you're not. You're going to tear it Your down. Your only way that building's going to go down is if it go down like the original Madison Square Garden, but go down in flames. That's the only way it's going to happen. Okay, then burn it. Okay, Alex, listen here. Listen. It is Listen, it Alex. Is. Tyler. TD Garden. Alex, remember that whole thing before the break? What, happened to, about what, happened, people, to Bo- what happened to Boston Garden? They, it, it was just it was out of date. That thing that thing was out of date, severely out of date. Okay. Now, let's talk about Madison Square Garden. What's wrong with it? I think. Are the facilities bad? No, not inherently. But think, are the suites bad? Are is the experience bad? No. They spend a lot of money on renovation because every they, year. Yes. Every year. Name me a barn that doesn't. No, not, yes, you're, not pro- you're right. Ca- not you're right. Capacity. MSG probably does the most because no, it's no, no. such a historic venue. It's the world's most famous arena, and there is no question about it. There's not an arena in the world that has the same mantra as MSG. There's nothing. O2 Arena in London, it's a great barn, Alex. I'll give you that, but it's not the same. It's not Wembley. It's it, Wembley Stadium. Yes, well, that's a stadium. That's different. What? what Wembley Stadium is... Is Wembley Stadium is a massive cathedral that hosts anything, and it makes it big. The NFL goes there with Jacksonville versus the New York Jets. Well, because Wembley is to England what Madison Square Garden is to the United States. United States. Yes, I concur with that. But that's what I'm saying, Alex. That's why you can't. And Wembley, the reason why they had to renovate that, Alex, because why? It was destroyed. Because it, it was destroyed, yeah, World War II, right? Is it World War II? The original one? The Wembley? original Wembley Stadium? Ugh, I may be off. It is, it, the original Wembley's, Wembley Stadium has gone through a lot. I feel like, it's, I feel like I'm off. It's been the renovated way. for more than just because of a war. That's true. But if anyway. the last time it was renovated, it was after World War II. Yikes. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. I, Good on them. They, were, they, they put in those elevators early. World War II was... It was good. It was, I mean... No. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> World War II <laughs> was good. It was good. Hi, welcome <laughs> to the Keel Show, where I'm about to learn this dude some ner- some nerve, <laughs> take care of some damage, <laughs> and talk about nerve damage. I had a, I had a, I lost my train of thought. So I just first thing came to my head. World War II. No, I lost a train of thought. <laughs> no, you found it. It was just in the wrong <laughs> side of the tracks. It was in the wrong way of the street. Mass Square Garden should not, I don't think that should be torn down. I think it's not like it's a falling apart building. It's not out of date by any stretch. We, I just, I'm like, what needs to be replaced? Like, and I just, I put those three up there because I don't like the location of BB&T and Prudential Center. And Saddle Dome is one of the oldest right now. I believe, is, Alex, quick look for me. You got the, you got the dates there. Saddle is, Dome was 86. And that is the oldest outside of MSG and NASA. Uh, hold on. Because I think it is. Oh, excuse me, 83. Correct. Just settled on. But that is the oldest, except for MSG and Nasso. Correct? So it's right now the oldest standing building. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, it's, so. It's the third oldest building. And, and I get building. that. The tough part for me is, the, and that's with the Sky Dome especially, is the nostalgia with the Saddle Dome. The cups, the the building when it's at its peak, it was absolutely amazing. It's, it was loud, it was intimidating. It was fun to be there, and that's what and it still is today. But I get it; it's an old arena, and that's why Nassau. When they were going back, they're like, "Okay, it's renovated now, so it's manageable to, for the Islanders to go play there now." And could they stay there? Possibly, but they are going to get the new arena, which is going to be awesome. And the design, I'm I'm looking forward to it. So I'm, it's better than the Barclays Center, but then again. Literally, listen. If we're if the Islanders were not getting a new arena, the Barclays Center would be at the top of this list. I mean, think about it though. If the Rangers just did decide to have some sort of huge renovation, even well, what even, be the if, Rangers? even even if it's still Madison Square Garden, but 
they did a huge, like, massive renovation where they're like, all right, we're going to need to shut down for a year. Yeah. The Rangers are going to go to the Barclays Center. Well, they would have to, yes, just because of necessity. Now, I mean, it's, it's, still, it's still New York. It's just right. It works. Right. But, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of an arena outside of those top three because, I, like I said, Newark is not a good place. Sunrise, I get it. There's room for the arena, but people have to get there. It is not close to Miami by any stretch of the imagination. So, basically, so, so what you're asking is which ones actually really need it? Which which need because and I'll be honest, this is coming from someone who has only been. So to, you're you're asking which teams need to move, not necessarily which arenas need to get demolished. Well, like, that's for me the BB&T and and Prudential Center. That's for me now because now going now I'll say this: go, being at Little Caesars, and I mean I have I walked Alex every inch of that arena during the GLI. So did I, but I was looking for beer. <laughs> oh well, but I well no, well not that time in GLI. I'm talking when I when I worked the GLI for the hockey writers last year. I walked every inch of that building. Let me tell you, Alex, that standard is set in my mind. I've not been to Edmonton yet. I understand that Edmonton sounds amazing. I still have to go there. Still have to go to Rogers Place. I took the 360 tour of it. It's really nice. It, I mean, it looks amazing. So that's the precedent. And sip, Alex, thinking about it's the we, it's the New precedent, yeah. I will say this, Alex. I love Scotiabank Arena. But holy cow, does it look severely outdated compared to Little Caesars. Now, granted, yes, that's a that's two-decade difference between the buildings of those arenas. The precedent of what an arena is expected to be nowadays has changed. Hence why the Sky Dome. Well, the Sky Dome's been outdated for about 20 years anyways. But I because the multi-purpose stadium is that that is long gone. You know, your Bush Stadium, your old Bush Stadiums, your you know, I'm trying to think of other ones. Three River Stadiums, Riverfront Stadiums in Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, respectively. But, I mean, the SM- SAP Center, it's still holding up well. I haven't heard too many things about it, bad things about it. The Staples Center is one of the still one of the most premier. It's literally the MSG of the West. From, And I know there's people talking about, well, apparently the Clippers may move back to the Forum. But that would be their own. They're going to renovate it. Yes, Alex, you have a cringe-worthy face. Sable Center was going to be the one that I was going to pick. Well, based on what? I was going to, well, it's still, okay. a, sta- it's well, still a state of the art arena. It's not an awful okay. arena. Here, okay. Here, here's my whole spiel. I knew this would be a tough conversation for us to actually pick one because I just felt like it was it's, something we're talking it's about. It's the California teams. The SAP, because I think it looks ugly. Well, that's why it's called a pavilion, but yes. It, it's just, it's not a pretty stadium. It, when you look at it and from what I've heard, it's, it's not a great stadium. It's, it's not bad arena, but yes, or arena. It's not a bad facility, but there's a lot of room for an improvement. And it's just a matter of how That's, much, how much they'd want to really put in. Is it worth it? And the huge reason why I say Staples Center is because. They really, really got set similar to what you're talking about with Little Caesars. There is now a new precedent in but the that, Golden but State. That could there be- is now a new precedent in California with the opening of Golden State's new arena that they just had. That and they that's just why. Out. And that's why Alex. I think it's the Sony uh, that's, Center. I think. Yeah. Whatever. Kawhi Leonard's home that he built because he. He tore down the Oracle and he built up whatever this new arena is. Because he Kawhi won. Leonard. Well, because it's Golden State's place. Dude. Yeah, Kawhi it's... Leonard tortured Golden State in the finals last year. Oh, shush. And he opened it with the Clippers this year and beat them. So it's the it's pretty much Kawhi Leonard owns the Warriors. What I'm saying, Alex. Anyways, the Chase Center. Excuse me. The Chase Center. Who cares? Chase Bank. I give that franchise now ten years before they become irrelevant again. Okay. Okay. But anyways, back to hockey. I want to see what the pond looks like. Because when the pond came out, it was this nice, fresh rink. They had a Frozen Four there, all-star games there. It's a nice, pretty nice-looking barn. So, like, well, let's let's check it out. I mean, I, I think it's still up and running. But once again, a facelift may be necessary. TD Garden's another one. <sighs> Except for T... Here's the thing about TD Garden. Oh, man. Here, see, no, no, no. Here's the, no, hold on. Before, before you, before you say something, because I think I know what you're going to say. The reason why I think TD Garden, it's not going to be renovation. It's going to be a teardown. They would have to tear it down is because they have tried to pack so many seats into it. 
and they've tried to reconfigure the seating of TD or TD Garden. What's what's the capacity so at? Currently, it's seventeen thousand five six five. Seriously? Holy cow! That's tiny. Uh, it's not really that tiny if you all think about it. It's one of the Don't higher ones. Don't compare it to Winnipeg, okay? That's not no, no, fair. no, no, no. It's that's not fair. That was really built to be a minor league slash junior rink that could have no an HL no team. arena in the NHL reaches twenty thousand. No, it doesn't. Go back. Go back up. Nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. What's What's Little Caesars at? Little Caesars is a it, whopping. It. It's one of the smaller ones, uh, or thin ones. It is nineteen thousand oh. five hundred fifteen. I thought they were like at twenty one thousand. Well, because I know in the United Center they can fit twenty one thousand in there. This is hockey. This is hockey. No, no, no. They can fit twenty one. They fit twenty one thousand for the Hawks standing room. A lot of standing room. Okay. No, no. I'm no tie. Alex, when this the, is capacity when the Hawks are, at hockey. When this the is, Hawks are in the finals, Alex, the fire marshal gets paid off, okay? By the Chicago mob. That's really how... Or Vince Vaughn, maybe. I don't know. Maybe Vince Vaughn owns the Chicago mob. I don't know, but regardless. The capacity limit for hockey at the arenas, at these arenas in the NHL, does not reach 200,000. Say it again. Say it again. 20,000. <laughs> World War II is great, well, Alex. Well, <laughs> it's accurate, though. They don't reach 200,000. <laughs> so they don't reach, like, they also again. don't reach 20,000. But, but So TD Garden is one of those because... It's one of those arenas that they've inst- their renovations as far as seating chart has been pushing the seats closer and closer and closer and closer and closer together. And it's something that we've even seen at Van Andel Arena. Well, Van Andel, where, no. they, where they pushed and made seats no. seating smaller. It's because yes. we started to sit down in the lower bowl. We realized how no, tight it is. They've pushed, they put seats in there. Are you sure our butts just haven't gotten bigger? No, I'm dead serious. They've put seats in there. Can't confirm. I just feel like, yeah, they have gotten tighter. But I know that's, so, well, that's so, what they do with the Upper Bowl. They make them so, tighter. So TD Garden. Hold on. No, I'm going to tell you why you're why they won't. Why not? How loud it is. And this is why it sucks because I'm a Leafs fan. Because, shoot, how how loud do you think that game was that we went to back in 2017? When that team was playoff bound, how loud do you think that building was? In Toronto? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I literally, I chirped Ovechkin. From the upper bowl, and I'm pretty sure you could have heard me. But you go to TD Garden, Alex, and it's a dis- and, it, and it carried over from Boston Garden. Ty, it's just a different atmosphere. Ty, Alex, you you say that it oh cause it's so loud. Well, you're also saying about the saddle dome. Then your argument's invalid. But the saddle you can't okay. you can't just play well, favorites. Well, no, no. Okay, well the saddle dome. Hold on, hold you, on. You do realize but the saddle dome is older facilities, older just about everything. Okay, but look, but if you look at how the TD Garden is built, it's made to be loud. Look at the roof; it's made to be loud. They just built it's, a larger Boston Garden. It's the it, same it, reason why Chicago is very loud. It's the same reason why Vegas is really loud. Is because the structure of the building can change the acoustics of it. If you want it to be loud, you can make a arena that fits twenty thousand people safely in seats and still have it be a hectic and loud crowd. It's yeah. also just a matter of, why is Boston so loud? It's because they have Boston fans. And they're like... That's a huge Vertical. Thing. Right. So instead of having everything so vertical and destroying everything, what they can do is have that vertical aura about it and having everyone pushing sound into the roof and then have it, having it go back down to ice level but have a nicer facility. TD Garden has been renovated. Not on a major scale, but, they've but had, a lot. They've had minor fixes, yes. They've had to do certain things, and a huge thing has been seating. Because Tear the roof more off and more add people, about 10 more rows. When the Celtics won the their championship in the NBA, they added seats. When the Boston Bruins won their championships, they added seats. It's what happens. They want to bring in as much revenue as possible, so how do you do that? You have more seats. That brings in more ticket revenue, which makes people buy more concessions, blah, 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 yada, yada. I don't even need to say it to you. But TD Garden is one of those places that I could see that I think Boston deserves a new arena. Or at the very least, I think they should move. But where are you going to move to? Because Boston is the... TD Garden is the only place in Boston where you can actually play. Yes. Um, T-Mobile, I mean, now, T-Mobile is very new. Don't need to do it. Um, but 
like I said, Staples Center. Um, what's another? I'm trying to think of one? arenas that are like that are to the point where like because Scotiabank, it's perfect. It's what it has now. Granted, yes, the third deck. You know, like, listen, I didn't want to move from my seat at all because I'm like, I, because you could not go into the bathroom and come back out before the end, before the next period. You don't need to do Enterprise Center. Enterprise Center is beautiful. It's very nice. It's beautiful. It's in a weird part of the town, though. From what I, from people that I've talked to that were at the All Star Game, it it's is not too much far away from Bush. It's. I guess I've, what, I'm, what I've been told is St. Louis, but the rink is nice. Yes, it wasn't the it entire wasn't, city of St. Louis is weird it's when it's a, when it's laid it out. It's major. It is a major upgrade from the old St. Louis Arena, which stinks because once again, that's just a nostalgia thing with me. Well, okay, home of the St. Louis Vipers of the National Roller Hockey yes. League. So, th- <laughs> so the, the thing is about, and this is why my thing with Sky Dome is this. Yes, it needs to be upgraded. The Sky Dome does. It needs to be, you have a new stadium, and I remember because. I looked up. This will be our last thing, Alex. Before we go. Oh well, yeah, it's eight twenty six. The, the tie. Like I, I found on YouTube, people post like their own home movies when they toured Tiger Stadium in its last season, and you saw how desperate that ballpark was to for Detroit to need a new ballpark. But here's the thing, Alex, and same thing with the Saddle Dome when it goes down. Same thing right now with the Sky Dome being talked about getting brought down. It's the memories. I love going to the Sky Dome, no matter how old it is, no matter. If Concrete's falling off when you're walking the the walk up to the fifth deck. That ballpark is its own. It's got its own kind of charm to it. Right, in, you know, kind of on the south tip of downtown, right off of the right off Lake Ontario. There, you get that nice, good skyline shot from the island. Seventy seven was when they tore it down, right? No, or when they moved. They moved in no seventy seven was when the city owned it. But no, they moved in ninety nine. Ninety nine was the last. Ninety nine, okay. Yep. Two thousand was. Remember, we were there for the first year, of the inaugural season of. The I don't Tigers. remember. I know you were too young. You were a year and a half. You weren't even two years old when we went there. But it's the thing is, and it's with any arena. Like when the Islanders officially do move away from Belmont, and when they first moved away from Nassau, it was the fact that that was their barn. That was their barn. Yes, was Barclay Center in terms of anemones facilities much better than Nassau at that point? One thousand percent, Alex. However. It's the fact that that was their barn. Who I forgot who said it about San Diego, Qualcomm Stadium. It was a dump, but it was our dump. The Sky Dome, falling apart, crappy concrete fixture. Yes, but it's Toronto's concrete fixture. Yeah, but safety is another thing, too. If, well, there's, if there's stuff that's wrong with it and upkeep is a huge thing, it's a financial thing, too. Uh, Joe Louis Arena. We didn't want to move to Little Caesars, but look where we're at now. Whole the front row, goodness. Alex, tilted when we sat down. Precisely, there was not a single cup holder in the. Even building. though, even though I wish that the Detroit Red Wings were still playing at the Joe, don't need to. I will say because the atmosphere you know that. Oh, okay. Maybe the it's cause memories will always stay. Yes, it will stay because you know what. Islanders fans, even after they tear Nassau Coliseum down, whenever that is, they'll still have those memories of those cups. Yep. Three in a row. Four in a row. Four in a row. <laughs> there we go. 200,000. I always forget. World War II is great. Zach Wilson. We're on fire. We're hitting the, our peak. The memories will always stay with the organization. I agree. But progress always moves forward. Yes. And with moving forward, so does 12 ounce sports. Talking Miners with Rando is next. He's going to talk Ravens and Steelers getting postponed again. Wrap it up. up. Send it. And the MLB draft. Hashtag TKS at the Kiel Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For Tyler, I'm Jim Sox. We'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye, everybody.